And we are live. What's up, guys? Welcome to Fed It Man. Today we're gonna cover XXX Tentacion's tragic murder, guys. We got a lot to cover on this one. Pretty extensive. Let's get right into it. I was a special agent with Homeland Security Investigations, okay, guys? HSI. The cases that I did mostly were human smuggling and drug trafficking. No one else has these documents, by the way. Here's what Fed It covers. Dr. Lafredo confirmed lacerations due to stepping on glass. Murder investigation. You see him reaching in his jacket. You don't know. And he's positioning. Been on February 13, 2019. You're facing two counts of premeditated murder. Racketeering and RICO conspiracy. Young, young slime life here and after referred to as YSL. The defendant's uh, 6 9 And then this is Billy Seiko right here. Now, when they first started, guys, 6 9 ran. Well, I'm a fed. I'm watching this music video. You know, I'm bobbing my head like, hey, this shit lit. But at the same time, I'm pausing. Oh, wait, who this? Right? Oh, who's that in the back? Firearms and violent crimes. AKA, Bush IC violated. You're ordered to stay away from the victim. Trapper Bush IC arrested after shooting at King of Diamonds, oh, Miami Strip Club, injured I mean, one this person. Is the, this is the one that, that's gonna fuck him up because this gun is not traceable. Well, it happened at the gun range. Here's your boy, 42 Doug, right here on the left. Okay. Sex trafficking and sex crimes. They can effectively link him to paying an underage girl. I'm gonna lock my fifth window. Right. And well, the first bomb went off right here. Suspect two sent down a backpack at the site of the second explosion. Inspired by Al Qaeda. Two terrorists, the brothers, the Zokar Sarnev and Tamer Lynn Sarnev. When the cartel shipped drugs into the country. As this guy got arrested for um, espionage, okay, trading secrets with the Russians for monetary compensation. The largest corrupt police bust in New Orleans history. The days of the police are gone. gone. So he was in this bad boy. We're gonna go over his past, the gang ties, so that this all makes sense. All right, we are live. What's up, guys? Welcome to Fed It Man. Happy to be here with y'all. You guys could be anywhere else in the world, but you guys are here with me on a Sunday night. Today, I'll be covering the XXX Tentacion case, uh, the tragic murder. Uh, we got a lot to cover, but before we get into it, I got a special guest in the house. You want to introduce yourself to the people? Hi, guys. I'm Jacqueline. You can follow me on Instagram at J-P-U-M-A-A. -A. I'm a tattoo artist and a painter. Anything else you want to tell the people? <laughs> Don't yell at us. No. I'm excited, though. All right, cool. A woman, a few words. Fantastic. That's what we like. <laughs> women deserve less and women speak less. No, I'm just kidding. That ain't that type of podcast. Anyway, guys, uh, <laughs> welcome to Fed It, man. So uh, I'm going to get right into it. I got my notes ready to go. We got our research done. Um, and uh, I actually started somewhat on time. I only started about five minutes late on this one. So I'm giving myself a Don DeMarco because these cases take a lot of time to research, guys. Um, I was reading through court documents all day. Um, and yeah, these guys are some of the dumbest criminals I've probably ever come across, but, um, but don't worry, I'm going to cover dumbest criminal in the future. It's probably going to be AR ab, uh, probably one of the worst self snitchers ever go ahead and research him guys. Um, but yeah, I've been getting a lot of requests for him. Uh, quick announcements before I get into it. Um, as you guys know, we got some things going on. We got a big deal that we got that we're going to make an announcement for tomorrow on Fresh and Fit. We're going to give you guys two episodes of Money Monday. It's either going to be 5 or 6 p.m. depending on what's going on. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and have a second Money Monday with you guys. Uh, we're going to have Lucky, uh, I think it's Lucky Luke or something like that. It's one of Fresh's guests. We're going to talk about cars. And then we're going to have Money Berg and Brandon Carter come in. And we're going to talk about entrepreneurship, making money, etc. Then, of course, we're going to have the After Hours show. So you guys are getting three episodes tomorrow. And uh, I'm closing on a house, guys. It's going to be my 10th property. So, yeah, man, trying. Uh, so I will, um, you know, we'll see what happens. I'm supposed to close it later on in the evening. But um, but I'll make sure that I'm available for the shows and everything else like that. But uh, And then also, um, let's see here, uh, another podcast deal. We're going to make that announcement tomorrow. And uh, we're going to be transitioning over from Patreon, guys, okay? We're going to be on Locals very soon. So uh, we'll stay tuned for tomorrow on that one. We'll talk about that in a little bit more detail. But um, anyway, with that said, guys, today we're going to be covering XXX Tentacion. Uh, you listen to his music, right? You have anything you want to say? I know you're a fan of his music. I love his music. He's awesome. He speaks to so many different people. I think he's dope. So I think it's a tragic murder, honestly. Yeah. Um, and you're from, well, we're going to talk about it in a second. You're from Fort Lauderdale. So this is, uh, this case, um, is very close to home here. So, all right, guys, let's get right into it. All right. So 
uh, as you guys know, right, for those of you, we have a lot of viewers here that may or may not be aware of the hip-hop scene, so I always like to go with a quick little wiki overview of who the individual is, and then we're going to go ahead and get into the the case. All right, so uh, Jesse Dwayne Ricardo Onfroy, born January 23rd, 1998 to June 18, 2018, uh, known professionally as XXX Tentacion, often stylized as XXX Tentacion, and commonly referred to as simply X was an American rapper, singer, and songwriter. Though a controversial figure due to his widely publicized legal troubles, X gained a cult following among his young fan base during his short career with his depression and alienation-themed music. Critics and fans often credit him for his musical versatility with his uh, music exploring emo, drill, trap, lo-fi, indie rock, new metal, hip-hop, R&B, and punk rock. He's considered to be a leading figure in the emo, rap, and SoundCloud rap genres with... Uh, which garnered mainstream attention during the mid to late 2010s, okay? Um, born in Plantation, Florida, which, guys, is only about 40 minutes from here, uh, X spent most of his childhood in Lauderhill. He began writing music after being released from a juvenile detention center and soon started writing his music career on SoundCloud in 2013. Guys, let me tell you about Lauderhill, by the way. that uh, Lauderhill is not sweet. Um, I'll never forget this going back in time real fast. Story time. When I was an agent, in I want to say 2019, it was either 2019 or early 2020. Uh, I went ahead and I was uh, I got an arrest warrant for a guy. The guy was a smuggler. You know, he, he had you know done some dumb shit. We were able to build up the probable cause and get an arrest warrant for him, right? So I went looking for the guy, and I will never forget that one of his addresses, right, was um, in Lauderhill. So we went to the area to go like do surveillance and you know see if he was there and everything else that else like that. And I'll never forget, man. That place was the fucking hood, man. We were there at like 5 30, 6 o'clock in the morning. And we went to go do a search, uh, the arrest warrant. And we kicked the door in and we went in. And there were like 10 people living in there. It was like this cramped little ass apartment. Uh, but the crook wasn't there. You know, we got his family to call and they didn't, you know, the oh, their cops are looking for you. And he was like, Yeah, I'm gonna turn myself in. And I was like, this fucking cat, this guy's probably gonna run. We ended up finding him later on. But the one thing I do remember was that Lauder Hill was definitely not a nice place, man. It's not to be confused with Fort Lauderdale. Fort Lauderdale, Lauderdale, Lauder Hill is a whole other thing, all right? Uh, so yeah, that place sucks. Uh, but anyway, going back, um, and, and he talks about that a lot in his No Jumper interview about how he grew up fighting and, you know, it was uh, very dangerous. Um, okay, employing styles and techniques that were unconventional rap music, such as distortion, heavy guitar-backed uh, instrumentals, drawing inspiration from third wave emo and grunge. In 2014, he formed an underground collective members only and alongside other members of the collective soon became a popular figure in SoundCloud rap, a trap music scene that takes elements of lo-fi music and harsh uh, 808s. X gained mainstream attention with the single Look At Me, which uh, if you guys look or follow me on Instagram, you guys know that I had played this uh, as, as a song in the background. His debut album, 17, in 2017, is certified double platinum in the U.S. and reached number two on the Billboard 200. His second album, question mark, 2018, debuted at number one on the Billboard 200 and is certified quadruple platinum in the U.S. Its lead single, Sad, uh, posthumously released, uh, reached number one on the Billboard Hot 100. And guys, what posthumously pretty much means after they pass away. And had amassed more than 1.3 billion views on YouTube and 1.7 billion streams on Spotify by November 2021, as well as being certified diamond by the RIAA in August 2021. Okay. Now, the dark side here, guys. Okay. A lot of people may or may not know this. He did have quite a bit of legal trouble, guys. Uh, X had faced a variety of legal issues throughout his lifetime, most notably the controversy that arose from the battery charges, which were levied against him in 2016. X's history of legal issues and alleged violence has been described by some as defining his legacy, while others have criticized the media's portrayal of him, arguing that his perceived improvements and character later in life have made his legacy into a tale of power, uh, tale uh, into a tale of the power of second chances and redemption. And then sadly, this is what we're going to cover here, guys. On June 18, 2018, X... H20 was murdered when he was shot near a motorcycle dealership in Deerfield Beach, Florida. Okay. The attackers fled the scene in SUV. So, um, so that's a quick little summary. As you guys can see, incredibly accomplished music artist. Um, you know, it, when it comes to Florida guys, I mean, if you think of like top artists from Florida, you know, you think of guys like Kodak, you think of guys like X, these are guys that hit the mainstream, you know, put South Florida on the map, you know, um, yeah, I wouldn't even, no offense to Little Pump, but I wouldn't would put him in the same category as a guy like X or Kodak. 
Um, these guys are legends, especially down here. So, um, and you guys can see the numbers don't lie. I mean, I mean, this right here, guys, hitting number one on the Billboard uh, 200, right? Uh, you know, having two albums up top on, on that high on the Billboard, 1.3 billion views on YouTube, 1.7 uh, streams on uh, billion streams on Spotify. And the fact is, is that like this is in 2021. This is three years after he passed away, guys. Still extremely relevant. I mean, people play his music to this day. So He's prolific. For yeah. His age. He's yeah. Like, he's at its twenty. Exactly. Yeah. So um, there's no there's no doubt about it that um that he he's he's gonna go down uh, in the history books as far as Florida artists go. Um, but anyway, so we're gonna go ahead and show g cover a news article, guys, or a uh, clip. Actually, no, excuse me. See, I have all the tabs ready to go here. We're going to go ahead and cover um, the 911 call that came in when he was killed, uh, when he was shot on June 18th, 2018. All right. Um, just to kind of, and we're going to work our way just to let you guys know how we're going to do this. We're going to do this in chronological order from the timeline of events, from uh, the 911 call to the shooting, to reviewing the surveillance footage, to reading. I actually have the court documents guys i've never seen anyone else on youtube do this we're going to go through the entire criminal complaint that the detective wrote that um displayed the probable cause as to how they were able to identify and apprehend the four individuals who were responsible okay guys and we're going to go ahead and give an update on how their case is looking right now all right but we're going to start of course chronologically this was the first 911 call that came in so uh let's get into it man all units 1023, 1065, follow reference, signal 33. Just occurred, 3671 North Dixie at Riva Motorsports. Several gunshots possibly drive by. No description on the subject. Someone in a black BMW 3X. A witness advised a black Dodge Journey. Is the subject vehicle shot somebody in a black BMW? Uh, it's working off District 10, Radio 9 House. Prison. Dodge 22, I'm 40 out on that. Awesome. Uh, if we get a unit, a uh, late unit, preferably, uh, they can leave Bravo 21 at the uh, crime scene. The two threes off. Task Force. The last update they gave was either a Chevy Suburban or Tahoe. A dark in color, could be blue or black. Two black males occupied, just advised there should be a Louis Vuitton bag within the vehicle that was taken from the victim. Being advised, it is a black Dodge Journey. Black Dodge Journey. Black wheels, two black males. One subject was wearing a purple hoodie. Second subject had a red mask on. Vehicle was last seen fully in southbound from Reba. Yankees, when further updates, the hoodies had purple sleeves, tan body. Uh, both are just wear, were wearing the same hoodies with the purple sleeves, tan body, and the shooter had the uh, red mask on. They are wearing, like, dark green pants or shorts. No tag? Still no tag. Black Dodge Journey, black wheels, dark tints. So as you guys can see, right, pandemonium, they're not really sure what's going on. They're trying to figure out what's going on. They're like, what the hell? You know, shots fired. What were they wearing, et cetera? Because at this point, right, he was driving a car, which an Audi, right? A very fancy Audi, expensive Audi. And you guys are going to see here that it caused quite a bit of a scene. And he's a famous rapper, especially down here in Florida. So people knew right away. Um, so now that was the 911 call. Now we're going to get into the first news break on this um and remember guys this is before they identified anybody we're going in chronological order here and we already got what uh 1000 plus y'all in here so guys do me a favor like the video uh, i'll read some of these chats real fast uh we got kev's garage no more eric uh no guys no not not right now um let's see here uh go through some of these chats and thank you guys so much for donations i appreciate it fed it is my break from the harsh truths expressed on fresh and fit i appreciate you Myron. you have changed my outlook on life i got y'all man you gotta, you know, you can't complain about the situation. You just gotta become a better man. Uh, Ever Blazer uh, goes, You gotta be kidding me. I just finished the season finale to a show, and just now my boy Myron making a fed on the Young Legend Props to your Fire Ass channel, bro. And how do I get a membership? I don't see the link anywhere. Uh, yeah, man, you could you become a member. Just click the 
become a member button. I, I don't know where it is exactly. I ain't gonna lie, but become a member. <laughs> you know, like I said before, guys, I don't do this channel for the money. I do this channel uh, for you guys. Uh, congrats on your deal and RIP. X. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, rest in peace. Uh, that was from before. Um, let's see here. Uh, keep doing God's work, bro. We all got your back. Thank you, Trillstein. I appreciate that greatly. Thank you. Thank you. Top Jew. Uh, been waiting on this one, sir. Yes, you guys have been asking for X for a while. That's why I covered this one. You guys really been asking for this one for a minute, man. So, uh, and then Michael Trillstein earlier, $1. Appreciate that. And I think we're, are we caught up? I think so. Yeah. yeah. Okay. If anyone else, anyone else uh, comes in. And then shout out to all the members as well, guys. We'll be highlighting members. We'll be highlighting Super Chats as always, as you guys know. So let's get back. So we covered who X was, and then we covered the 911 call. Now we're going to get into the first news break on this, okay? Murdered. Police are now investigating the death of a popular rapper in Deerfield. That's this car right there worth about 150 k I think that's an Audi i8, if I'm not mistaken. Beach. CBS 4's Riel Crane is live on the scene where he was shot and killed, and Riel, it appears two men might have been trying to rob him. Uh, that's what VSO is saying. Uh, this really stunned fans of XXX Tentacion. You can see right here where they have gathered, or where they gathered rest last night, rather, for a vigil. After learning about the shooting that claimed his life, listening to his music, praying, and lighting candles in his memory. A growing memorial for rapper XXX Tentacion outside the Deerfield Beach motorcycle dealership where he was gunned down in broad daylight. The 20 year old from Plan name was Jase Onfroy, was leaving Riva Motorsport when he was shot. Before four, as the male left the premises, he was approached by two armed suspects. At least one of the suspects uh, fired the weapon in what uh, at this point appears to be an apparent robbery. According to the Broward Sheriff's Office, the suspects fled. And <laughs> FBI says some of the females in Florida are built like Trick Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> A dark colored SUV. Chopper 4 was over the scene off North Dixie Highway and Northeast 36th Street as the investigation unfolded. The popular rapper was rushed to Broward Health North where he was pronounced dead. All I heard was one gunshot, like pow, and then I just seen everybody crowding around the car and stuff. And I saw the police cars. And yeah, and I'm not going to play it on this uh, podcast, guys, but, you know, people were recording his dead body in the I-8, which, you know, uh, to me, I look, I think that's extremely disrespectful. Um, you know, you should be on the phone with 911 or trying to render aid, not recording it to put on World Star. So that's I'm not going to play that. But um, but yeah, there was a crowd of people around the vehicle after he had been shot. So wild, man. Back to the video. The helicopter. It's pretty crazy. As his fans got word of the shooting, they started showing up at the scene. His diversity as an artist was was unreal. I was really shocked. Uh, you know, I couldn't believe it. I had to come to see for myself. X says he was no. What are you smiling for, bro? People are weird, man. With the Bluetooth and the strange hat. <laughs> what the hell? To his fans, had had run-ins with the law. In 2016, he was arrested on charges including home invasion for a 2015 incident. Less than a month later, arrested on charges that he had attacked his pregnant girlfriend. He was released from jail on house arrest late last year as released from house arrest earlier this year to allow him to tour. He posted this on Instagram, although when this was recorded is unclear. If I'm going to die or ever be a sacrifice, I want to make sure that my life made at least five million kids happy. That was real. Yeah. So, you know, like I said before, I, I, I genuinely believe that he was in a reform part of his life. Um, you know, he had made some really serious mistakes, obviously uh, armed uh, home invasion. He had done an armed home invasion and he went to jail for that. And he also, you know, beat up his girlfriend. So um, but he was trying to he was basically, you know, switching things around and uh, and then ended up, uh, you know, he ended up passing away before righting his wrongs. But um, let's continue on, guys. Oh, Wealthy Jit goes, love the videos, Myron. Keep it up, man. Thank you very much, my friend. Uh, and then we got, okay, anything else? Any other no. chats? No? Okay. That's Shout out to Jackie in the back helping out. <laughs> um, okay. So just I just want to also show you guys that there was a huge vigil, or vigil, however you want to pronounce it, right after he passed away, just to kind of show you guys the type of influence this guy had. And... Uh, this was where the shooting actually happened, guys, right, on Google Maps here. So this is Riva Motorsports, right? And it's uh, Deerfield Beach. 
you know, up in Broward County, about mm, probably 30, 40, it's about probably 45 minutes from here uh, in Miami. So this is the side entrance where the, the, the killing actually happened, which is where the vigil is now. I think uh, you said you were there recently, yeah, right? Yeah, they it, still have They still have it? it? Mm-hmm. Okay. So um, here's the front, guys, of the location. Um, some of you guys down here from South Florida probably know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, you can see the turnpike right here. Okay. Interstate 95. Right. So here it is right here, guys. This is the uh, this is the motorsport spot. Hold on. Let me. There's a sign right here. There you go. Boom. Riva Motorsports. Okay. But he was coming out the in- the I think that yeah, this is the entrance right here. And then the exit is on the side. Okay. And that's when they got him, which we're gonna go over that footage here in a second. Uh, but just kind of want to give you guys get get you guys familiar with the location where this uh attack happened. All right, so this is where the vigil occurred. Good night, fans of a popular South Florida rapper are gathering at a- hundreds of people, man. This was crazy when this happened, guys. Like the world was in shock. You know, bringing y'all back in time here a little bit. With this is almost what five years ago, almost now at this point. Four and a half, four and some change. Vigil to remember him. The 20 year old from Broward County was killed yesterday during an ambush and robbery. His killers are still on the loose. CBS 4's Joe Murray is live for us in Deerfield Beach at that vigil. Joan? And Elliot, when I spoke with that rapper's grandmother this afternoon at their Parkland home, she told me despite everything you may have read or heard, he really was a good young man and that his music will live on. Well, it's apparent when you look at the couple hundred people who have gathered here tonight for this vigil, uh, they came with balloons and flowers and a need to be together in their grief. It's just sad how someone this young just gets shot out of nowhere. Whoever killed rising rap artist Tentacion hasn't been caught. The 20-year-old was found shot in his sports car Monday afternoon, just as he left Riva Motorsports, where he was a longtime customer. Witnesses said the suspect stole a Louis Vuitton bag and fled in a dark SUV. That's all you had to the black Dodge journey. And we're going to talk about what was in that Louis Vuitton bag here in a second. Black wheels with a black male in a purple hoodie. And the second subject of had a red mask on. Oh, uh, B. Smith. Uh, yeah, X and Migos had beef too. Yes, this is true. All you gotta, all you gotta do is believe in yourself, bro. The singer who skyrocketed to the top of the music charts in recent months connected with listeners like Cassandra Pierre, who said she met X while working at a department store. He only tried to spread love and positivity. And although he had a lot of bad rep, the guy was really trying to change the world with his music and what happened to him wasn't fair. Despite his success, X had a troubled past that included arrests for home invasion and domestic violence against his pregnant girlfriend. I'd like to talk about love and it's always on my mind. Um, I'm always, oh, I've, I've really stopped looking for someone, unfortunately, because uh, currently what my mind is, it's just like, I don't want to say I've given up, but I've just seen everybody make me promises and make me promises on promises. I do want to say this, guys. He had a very loyal fan base, like almost cult following. I mean, I- I'll never forget that. He only had like maybe like one, like like 19K followers on SoundCloud, but he was like the most requested person to go on No Jumper. Like people were m- spamming at him to bring X on. So the people that listen to him, like listen to him for real, like they love him. That- There's a reason why his music is still popular to this day. A lot of the times when artists pass away, you know, their music, you know, loses a bit of le- relevancy. He's still very, very relevant, man. Very relevant. So, uh, you know, you got to respect uh, the power that his music holds with a lot of his supporters. Fans say he was turning his life around. This weekend, X was organizing a charity event. Yeah, he really just needed love. That's it. Some music. Like, he, he, touched, he touched a lot of people. As grieving fans and fellow musicians gather to mourn X a second night, they are fully aware of what they've lost. As a me being an artist myself, I make music. He was very inspirational, you know what I'm saying? In my opinion, I believe he was actually the best artist to come out of Florida, as versatile as he was. A live cut short. And a lot of people would agree with him. A lot of people would agree with him. A lot of people would put him over Kodak. A lot of people would say he's right there with Kodak. A lot of people would say, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, trick daddy who, you know what I mean? Like they, they would just, <laughs> this is just kind of the game, man. So, uh, yeah, 
Ford and BSO detectives say they need the public's help. Now, you heard that brief description of these suspects. One had a hoodie, one had a red mask. But other than that, BSO detectives need more to go on. And they're asking anyone with information to please call Crime Stoppers 954. All right. So where are we now? So we've covered, right? Guys, quick little recap real fast, because I already see we're, we're growing up quickly. We already got 1,300 you guys in here. So we covered who uh, X was. Then we covered, um, you know, the initial 911 call. Then we covered, you know, the first news break when he after he got uh, shot and ambushed and killed. And then obviously the vigil service, you know, you guys can see hundreds of people showed up there after finding out that he passed away. They went for days there playing his music candles you know what i mean obviously I, and i wanted to make sure i show you guys that so you know that this guy had a very strong fan base a lot of people loved him okay there's a reason why you guys were requesting me to cover this case for <laughs> damn near a year now at this point as soon as i started fed it you guys were asking me to cover this case so um so guys what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and show the surveillance footage okay what i'm about to show you guys is pretty graphic i'm not going to lie um but um it, it, you can't really tell the story without showing it, okay? And before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and take this time to show the four idiots that did this. These are the four morons, okay, guys, that are responsible for X's death. You got Diedrich Williams, Trayvon Newsom, Robert Allen, and Michael Boatwright, all right? Burn these names into your brain, because these guys... The Clown Brigade here. Okay, guys, and these guys are probably some of the dumbest criminals I've ever seen. But these are the four guys that killed X, okay, that conspired to rob and kill him. Uh, the person that actually pulled the trigger was this guy right here, Michael, Michael Boatwright, all right? And Newsom was the, the, was the other guy that robbed X in the surveillance footage I'm about to show you guys here in a second. But he was the shooter. He was the guy that was ac uh, ac uh, accompanying him. So I'm going to give them another L. <laughs> but I think it's very important that you guys know who these individuals are. I'll go ahead and keep flashing this on the screen as we're reading through the uh, court documents so you guys know exactly who we're talking about. But now you guys know who the four people are. All right, again, one more time. Diedrich Williams, Trayvon Newsom, Robert Allen, Michael Boatwright. Michael Boatwright was the one that actually fired the shots that killed X. All right, guys? Okay, now that you guys know who these ass clowns are, we're going to go ahead and look over the surveillance footage. This right here is Diedrich. This right here is Robert Allen. One more time to remind y'all, these two idiots are the ones that you guys are about to see on surveillance footage. This fat guy right here, Robert Allen and Diedrich Williams. Okay, so here they are coming into Riva Motorsports. All right, they walk in. There's X right there. They see him, and he looks back at him, and then they leave. So they scope out, and then about 20 minutes later, at 3:56 p.m., this is them coming out of the Jeep, uh, the Jeep. Uh, sorry, not the Jeep, the uh, Dodge Journey. Okay, and this is X in his car. He's driving, and he has his. Uh, I think it's either his uncle or his cousin with him, uh, because X didn't really like uh, going anywhere by himself, and for good reason. Okay, he had fifty thousand dollars with him, guys, and a gold chain, driving a one hundred fifty thousand dollar vehicle. So obviously these guys were were watching him. So this is Boatwright right here. This is Newsom. Boatwright, Newsom. And again for y'all. Now these are the two idiots that I'm talking about here. Boatwright is this guy, the taller one, and then Newsom is the smaller one. All right. And remember, these are the two that scoped out in in the uh these are the two guys that scoped them out at Rivas. All right. Or, or Riva. So let's get back to it. Wow. Taller one's got a short barreled rifle. The second one has what looks like a handgun. Uh, testimonial evidence is they're trying to get the victim to remove his chain that's around his neck. Uh, the victim is somewhat resisting. You can see the victim's hands coming out, uh, trying to push them back or, 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 or not cooperate. The littler guy goes to the passenger side. And just so you guys know, this is them playing it at court. I think this was more than likely the probable cause hearing uh, because these guys were trying to get bond after they got arrested. So they played this video to show that, yo, all four of these individuals were involved. They showed Diedrich and Allen, right? Fat boy and the guy with the tattoo face walking into the Riva uh, spot before. Then they showed the other two individuals robbing X. And 
Diedrich and Allen were in the vehicle while these two guys robbed them. So two guys scoped it out, and then two guys did the robbery. But they were all together in the same vehicle. All right, guys? And this right here is the prosecutor. I can tell from the questioning. So, based on your investigation, the smaller of the two individuals, who is this? I knew so. And this bigger person is who? Oh, right. All right, so he's rewinding it. So you guys can see here, basically what's going on is they're arguing X. X didn't want to give up the chain, and he didn't want to give up the money. All right? You can see he's fighting with them, and they're telling him, yo, give up the shit, give up the shit. And he didn't want to give it up, it, which, uh, you know, I wish he gave it up, bro. But, I mean, X wasn't that type of guy, I guess, um, which led to the, what you're about to see next. What I'm about to show you guys next is graphic, all right? Um, so I'm going to roll the clip. This is going to go in the vehicle. Boat race gonna fire around. And you can see that he fired uh, he fired at him at that point. Okay, and then you see Newsom, you know, running out after the the shots are fired, obviously like, oh shit. Which this guy, big L for him, shooting into the vehicle when your co-conspirator is in it wasn't really smart, but whatever. Uh these guys aren't tactically trained. But yeah, I'll rewind that real fast for y'all. So you can see they're struggling. Vehicle. And I saw a kickback there, so I think he shot. And then you can see his hand up right here. Here's X's hand. And then, bam, he starts shooting. Boat race going to fire rounds in at the victim. And Newsom's going to run out with Newsom the Newsom runs with the bag. Baton bag. And then they get out of there. He did shoot, guys. You got to remember that it's not... It's surveillance footage. It's not going to be 1080p 4K. You know, this isn't YouTube, you know, but he definitely shot. You guys can see the smoke coming out of the, out of the, out of the firearm, you know, so he definitely shot his gun. He's shining, shooting rounds into it. Um, so yeah, so no, I know, I know that was, uh, tough to see, but what we're going to do now, guys, is we're going to go ahead and start reading the criminal complaint. Okay. Which, uh, which was basically supported by an affidavit and the affidavit outlines all the facts all right so let's go ahead uh do we have any chats that came in um Can we pull them up real quick let me see here i see okay it was michael, michael trilsey and fat boy winner thank you so much mike i appreciate that uh we got uh michael trilsey and again with a dollar appreciate that um we got let's see here appreciate all the support guys i really do thank you you guys have been asking for this one for a while. Mikey G, welcome. You're a new member to the to the team. Shout out to you. Uh, B Smith, XXX Amigos had beef too. Yeah, I read that one before. I think we're caught up. I think so. Uh, Ever Blazer, new member. Welcome. Uh, love the videos, Myron. Keep it up, man. And that's from Wealthy J. Oh, yeah, that came from before. Okay, cool. All right. So we're going to go ahead. Oh, last one. Abe Avalos goes, no one's ever going to... Uh, Ever gonna X greatest artist? I think he means surpass X is what he meant. Greatest artist, uh, so diverse and greatest person takes a lot, lots to change so much in mindset. Long live Ja. Yeah, man. I, I knew a lot of you guys uh, would like uh, like his music, so which explains why so many requests came in for this case. So, all right, guys, let's go ahead and cover the criminal complaint now. All right, guys. Uh, so I haven't seen anyone go over this court document, so I need y'all. To let me pull it up right now. Bam. I, I'm giving myself a Don DeMarco, goddammit. Don DeMarco. Because no one has covered this. All right. People kind of go over the evidence here and there, but they don't actually go through the fucking document like I'm about to go through with y'all. All right. So here we are, guys. Broward County. This is a state case, not a federal case. All right. I hit goes. I live in a deaf video. Uh, I, I love the in depth video and new information you bring to the table to these cases that media doesn't cover. Absolutely. Uh, any chance that X organized this murder slash suicide for the contract money because he was scheduled for prosecution the following week? That might be why this trial is stalled for years. No, the reason why this uh, trial is stalled for years, guys, is because the state of Florida is way behind on all their cases. You join a Sneeko later, maybe, Lord. Um, but yeah, that's why Florida state cases in general, guys, let me tell y'all, are almost always backed up by years. Okay, so that is why. All right, so as you guys can see here, uh, this is a warrant for the arrest of Michael Boatwright. Just so y'all know, they got arrest warrants for all these ass clowns. However, the supporting documents is the same. What I mean by that is if you want to go ahead and get an arrest warrant on someone, right, 
you have to go ahead and file an affidavit, okay? And that affidavit outlines all the facts of the investigation. Typically, you can go ahead and file one affidavit, right, in support of an arrest warrant for however many individuals you want, right? But of course, that affidavit is going to have to outline probable cause for each of those individuals that you're looking for an arrest warrant for. So in this case, right, the detective wrote one affidavit, covers all the probable cause, all the facts, all the criminal elements for each perpetrator, four in this case, which again, it's these four ass clowns right here, just so y'all remember, okay? And I'm going to be pulling this up on screen multiple times so you guys know who these idiots are. Again, Deidre Williams, Trayvon Newsom, Robert Allen, and Michael Boatwright. Remember, guys, Michael Boatwright was the shooter. Trayvon Newsom was his co-conspirator when they went ahead and ran up on the vehicle. Robert Allen... And Dedrick Williams went into the Riva Motorsports to scope out X. X actually saw them as they were walking in, okay? Which probably explains why they weren't the ones that actually robbed them because X saw them. So they went ahead and drove the 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 um uh, the Dodge Journey and pulled up and they were in the vehicle when X was being robbed. And then these two idiots hopped out, Newsom and Boatwright, okay? So memorize these names, guys, because they're going to be mentioned in the affidavit quite a bit, all right? So let's get back to it. Uh, all right. So here's the arrest warrant. In the name of the state of Florida, to all singular, uh, uh, to all and singular, the sheriffs and uh, constables of the state of Florida. Now, this is a state arrest warrant, guys, so it's a, a little bit different than the federal ones that we typically go to, right? First degree murder. What did I tell you guys before? Murder typically is almost always investigated exclusively by the state, especially when it's premeditated, right? So this right here, guys, first degree murder, this is what they're hitting YNW Melly with as well. This carries a death penalty in the state of Florida, all right, guys? So count one, first degree murder, did then and there unlawfully and feloniously and from a premeditated design, this is the key word here, premeditated, okay, to affect the death of a human being, and this is actually X's government name here, guys, they just, I don't know why they redacted it, that doesn't make sense, but probably because this case gets a lot of uh, media coverage, have an active part and did kill and murder by shooting him with a deadly weapon to wit, a gun contrary to, and then the uh, Florida state code, and then this is what it is, right? So the offenses set forth in the foregoing warrant are contrary to the statutes in such case made and provided and against the peace and dignity of the state of Florida attached hereto and made a part hereto uh, hereof by incorporation is the affidavit. Remember, guys, what I told you before, affidavit sworn statement by a law enforcement officer to some degree where they go ahead and, um, you know, state the facts of the investigation. They just write enough for probable cause executed by Detective John Circio. Yo, you know what? Don DeMarco for John Circio or Curcio. You're Italian. Is that Italian right there? Am I pronouncing that right? Curcio. Curcio. Okay, thank you. Shout out to the residential Italian in the house. All right. He is the one that went ahead and got these fucking idiots arrested. So shout out to him. All right. These are therefore to command you forthwith to arrest and said Michael Boatwright and bring him before me to be dealt with according to law, okay? So this is the arrest warrant, guys, signed by the judge, right? Martin S. Fine on July 10th, 2018, all right? So this is the arrest warrant. This is what a state arrest warrant looks like in the state of Florida. Here's the case number, etc. all right? Filed in Broward County, Florida. So now we're going to go ahead and get into the facts, all right? They're coming, they're, they're, here's the counts, right? Now here's the facts. On June 18, 2018, at 3.57 p.m., deputies were dispatched to 3671 North Dixie Highway in Deerfield Beach in reference to a shooting. That's uh, this place right here where I showed you guys before, Riva Sports, right? And, uh, oh, my bad. Where were we? We're right here. Okay. <laughs> Upon arrival, deputies found the victim, X, seated in the driver's seat of a black BMW parked on the north side of the parking lot of Riva Motorsports. The victim was suffering from what appeared to be several gunshot wounds. It was determined that the victim had come with a friend, uh, Leonard Kerr, to the location to look at motorcycles. And um, Jack, you were saying that he um, he he didn't he was going to bring his security that day, and he, he chose not to. He actually chose not to bring his security, and I think he wanted his uncle there. I feel like he knew something was like about to happen. Okay. Um, Kerr stated that. As they were leaving the location, their vehicle was cut off by a dark-colored SUV. Two subjects exited the passenger side of the vehicle, armed with guns, and de demanded property from the victim. The victim was then shot by the gunman. After the victim was shot, one of the gunmen entered the victim's vehicle and removed a small Louis Vuitton bag that belonged to the victim from within. The contents of the victim's bag includes, but is not limited to, the victim's cell phone, a BMW key fob, 
and fifty thousand dollars in U.S. currency. Okay, guys, holy! He was not fucking around. I don't know. You know, I think he and he went to Riva Motorsports, guys, to purchase a motorcycle. Yeah, he wanted a bike. Um, and I get it, right? I I, I see. Here's the thing, and I know some of you guys in the chat are saying, "Why the fuck would you go to a place with fifty thousand dollars cash?" You guys got to remember, this dude is 18 years old. He's from the hood. He just became a multimillionaire. He doesn't understand, right, certain things. When you're from the hood, you don't know about credit cards. You don't know about credit. You don't know about wiring money. You don't know none of this shit. All you know is do you have the money or not cash? That's what it is, right? So he wants to buy a bike. He's looking at it like, yo, I'm going to bring the cash in. Maybe I can negotiate a better deal. They always say money talks, right? And when you pull up in a duffel bag and you got the money cash, you're like, yo, listen, I want to go ahead and negotiate for a better price on this bike. I know it's 60K, but I got 50 right now. Let's do this. Well, it's going to be very difficult for people to turn that money away from me, right? But this is not the way to do it, man, unfortunately. But like I said before, he's from the hood, newfound money, right? Thought maybe he could maybe negotiate a better price. We'll never know exactly what was going through his mind at the time. But I'm speculating based on his age, his socioeconomic status prior to this kind of money, where he's from, because I know Lauder Hill very well. There's a bunch of surveillance there. Um, that he, this is just how guys from the hood are, man. All right. And this $50,000 is going to be a big part of this situation, guys. So both suspects re-entered the passenger side of the dark-colored SUV, and the vehicle fled the scene. The victim's vehicle was processed for both latent and DNA by crime scene detectives. An eyewitness to the shooting named Scott Barbu, or Bar Barbao, whatever, Barbex, I'm just going to say Scar Scott Barbie, <laughs> provided a sworn <laughs> statement and advised that both of the gunmen appeared to be black males wearing dark clothing, gloves, and wearing some type of face mask during the incident. One black in color and the other red in color. The one in red, guys, by the way, was your guy, this idiot right here, Boltwright. Boltwright was wearing the red one. He was wearing the black one, Newsom. In follow-up, it was determined that the victim had come from a Bank of America just before going to the Riva Motorsports. At the Bank of America, the victim had withdrawn $50,000 all in $100 bills. The $100 bills were wrapped in bank papers. The money was placed in a bag by the victim before leaving the bank. This transaction was confirmed in a sworn statement from bank teller uh, Cecilia Ramos. Man, bro, holy... And let me tell you this, they probably were watching him when he pulled when he uh, was at the bank withdrawing that $50,000. I mean, guys, you ain't going to miss an Audi, uh, you know, I8. You're not going to miss that kind of car. You're going to know who's driving that car. They go to the bank, you know what time it is. Real quick, Slayer8060 uh, goes, appreciate the amount of work uh, you put to make this content. RIPX, thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. This one took quite a bit of research. I ain't going to lie to y'all. So uh, Revo Motorsports is equipped with a multiple camera vi video surveillance system that captures both the interior of the business and the exterior surrounding parking area. The exterior surveillance video depicts the victim's vehicle parking at 3.30 p.m. and the victim and Kerr enter the store at 3.31 p.m. At 3.32 p.m., the suspect vehicle is observed arriving at the incident location and parking in the same parking area. Immediately thereafter, two subjects exit the driver's side of the suspect vehicle. The subject then exited the driver's seat uh, that exited the driver's seat was a black male wearing a white or light colored tank top, and the other subject was a heavy set black male in a dark colored t shirt. Refresher, guys, here's the footage right here. These two morons. Here they come in. And you guys could see, look at the quality of this. You could clearly see it's X and his relative. And then these two idiots walk by. X makes contact with them, right? He sees them. It's like, who are they? And he goes back and he looks back at him as well. And again, this is Diedrich, and that's Thomas They're Allen. And then these two idiots, about 20 minutes later, are robbing him. Okay? Let's go back to the affidavit. Uh, interior surveillance uh, depicts the two subjects enter the listed business at 3.30 p at 3 p.m. and walk past the victim and Kerr, who are already in the store shopping. The subject in the white tank top is wearing bright orange colored Sandals. Okay, guys. 
I want y'all to make a note of this right here. Bright orange colored sandals. All right. Keep that in mind. And who are they talking about? They're talking about this idiot right here, Dedrick Williams. All right. I'm going to go ahead and play the surveillance footage for y'all one more time so y'all can see the bright colored sandals. Uh, it's right here. You guys can see it right here. It's, it's, it's light. Let me enlarge it for y'all. But you can see how bright they are in the tent even. So he walks in. You can see him right there. Very distinct sandals. There he is right there. Hold on. Fast forward a little bit. Okay. Bam. You can see right here. What a moron. And then you can see them walking out with it. All right? Okay. Let's get back to the affidavit. Yo, get, like, guys, like the video, by the way. I know y'all, we got almost 2,000 y'all in here, man. We're reading the affidavit, going through surveillance footage. So moments later, the two subjects are observed on surveillance walking to the parts uh, uh, to the parts department where the subject wearing the white shirt tank top makes a cash purchase. Both subjects exit the store and return to the suspect vehicle, entering into it on the driver's side, the same way they had exited the vehicle. So they're in the driver's side, guys. Remember, when the dudes robbed them, what did they do? They jumped out the passenger side. The suspect vehicle remained in the same position in the parking lot for approximately 10 minutes, then exits the parking lot through the north gate at 3.48 p.m. So they leave, okay? They leave seven minutes before they rob them, seven to six minutes before they rob them, right? Because they robbed them, guys. Remember, back to surveillance footage, at about 3.55, 3.56 p.m., right? Awesome. Yep, 3.56 p.m. So right before they went and they parked and they waited for his car to come out, and then that's when they went ahead and they um, stopped them. Uh, okay. The suspect vehicles observed driving slightly westbound on Northwest 37th Street, then backing into the bar parking area in front of the residence located at 641 Northwest 37th Street, just north and west of the gate. There is a clear and unobstructed view of the north gate to the incident location from where the suspect vehicle is parked. The suspect vehicle remains parked at this location until the victim's vehicle begins to leave at 3.55 p.m. The suspect vehicle appeared consistent with being a Dodge Journey. The video surround shows that when the victim's vehicle attempts to leave through the north gate, the suspect SUV travels east towards the victim's vehicle and blocks the victim's vehicle by pulling in front of it. It should be noted that the surveillance cameras maintain sight of the suspect vehicle from the time it exits the north gate of the incident location parked at 641 Northwest 37th Street and returns to the north gate to block the victim's vehicle. So they got him the whole fucking time, bro, on camera. Two mass subjects observed exiting passenger front and passenger rear doors of the suspect vehicle armed with firearms. And of course, guys, that is right here, right? They come out driver's side, passenger side, uh, uh, sorry, front passenger seat, back passenger seat. They hop out. And then you can see Diedrich and Fat Ass Allen are on the are on the opposite side. Okay, and remember, just so you guys remember, Allen, Fat Boy, Diedrich, <laughs> idiot, right, with the sandals. And then these are the two shooters. All right, because I don't want you guys to forget who's who, because this is all very important. All right, uh, where were we? Okay, passenger front and passenger rear doors of the suspect vehicle armed with firearms. Both subjects initially approach the driver's side of the vehicle and can be observed reaching into the vehicle. After a brief struggle, the victim is shot. The taller gunman is wearing a light-colored hooded sweatshirt, dark-colored long pants, and a dark-colored high-top sneakers. Okay? Make note of that too, guys. He's wearing dark-colored high-top sneakers. That's who's wearing that? Boatwright is wearing that. All right? Dark-colored high-top sneakers. The shorter gunman is wearing a similar colored hooded sweatshirt, light colored sweatpants, and dark colored high top sneakers. All right. So both of the shooters are wearing dark colored high top sneakers. Associate Broward Medical Examiner Dr. Boyko ruled the victim's cause of death as multiple gunshot wounds and the manner of death as homicide. Surveillance from the interior of Riva Sports shows the subject with the white tank top and orange sandals make a purchase inside the business. Business receipts show that this purchase was a cast purchase. For a black neoprene mask. Bruh. Stupid. Store employee Jesse Butchajikan. Gian. I'm just going to say Jesse. 
conducted the sale of the mask to the subject and the white tank top stated that he knew the subject by face as a repeat customer, but did not know the subject by name. So hold up one second. Rewind. These have got to be the dumbest criminals ever. <laughs> Surveillance from the interior of the Riva Motorsports shows the subject with the white tank top. This nigga right here, Diedrich Williams, okay? And orange sandals make a purchase inside the business. Business receipts show that this purchase was a cash purchase for a black neoprene mask. Oh In English, guys, that's a fucking ski mask. These are... All right. Store employee. (laughs) (laughs) Bruh. (laughs) This is so stupid. I can't believe this. Oh, no. It gets better. But wait, there's more. (laughs) All right. Uh, Store employee Jesse conducted the sale of the mask to the subject in the white tank top, stated that he knew the subject by face. So let's get, let me get this straight. These guys walk in, see the victim, say, you know what? We forgot to get fucking masks. <laughs> <laughs> we forgot to get masks. Let's buy the masks in the same location <laughs> that has the cameras of the person that we're going to rob. This is crazy. Bruh. <laughs> L. Criminals. <laughs> I'm dead. All right. So still photographs were taken from the store video and distributed to patrol units. Deputy Chris Lambert conduct, uh, contacted this detective. Curcio, and advised that he believed that the subject in the white tank top was a subject named Diedrich Williams, born November 27th, 1996. Well, he's a fucking idiot. What sign is that? Eldrick. Eldrick. (laughs) (laughs) They're calling him Eldrick in the chat? (laughs) He's so dumb. (laughs) Oh, man. During a query of several social media sites, an Instagram account belonging to Williams was located. The Instagram username is listed as Tattoo man Chucky. <laughs> well, guys, guess what? I got this Instagram right here. <laughs> look at these sandals. What does that look like? This is so dumb. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Same sandals. Let's go back to the criminal complaint. <laughs> All right. During a query of several social media sites, an Instagram. Oh, sorry. Uh, so tattoo man Chucky, right? They identify his Instagram. This is Diedrich Williams again. This idiot right here. This guy. All right. <laughs> Several public photographs had been posted to this Instagram account. One of these photos dated April, in April 2018 depict Williams wearing bright orange sandals. Upon review of Williams' Instagram page, Tattoo Man Chucky, Williams is observed wearing the same or similar bright orange sandals and photos taken in May 2018. The video surveillance from the store captures the subject in the white tank top wearing the same or similar bright orange sandals sandals well let's take a look at his instagram guys as y'all can see okay here's his caption they be hating they be lying on me too middle finger here's the sandals okay then he has another picture with these sandals in may what uh let me find it (laughs) wait he wore them again yeah he did what an idiot yeah he he wore them again he's not the smartest individual I mean, Was this it? Here we go. Stop. Yep. Same sandals. L. <laughs> Once again. What an idiot. Uh, so, and going back to the, uh, the to the surveillance footage, y'all can clearly see him wearing them when he walks in. Here he is again. What a sandals. Bum. Same ones. <laughs> I'm, I'm blown away. Yeah. All right. Fantastic. Back to the complaint. All right. So they got the picture from May, which I just showed y'all. This is uh, May 4, 2018. And then here's the other one. Him standing clear. April 24, 2018. Both sandals. All right. Only sandals. (laughs) Yeah, the chat's going crazy right now. (laughs) The comments are even better. Yo, look at the comments. I know you regret those sandals. <laughs> Everybody's sandals caught you lacking. Like, bro, the, the comments got no <laughs> chill. You kill a legend, traitor, tentacion. You look like you got autism. Yo, I know that. <laughs> Yo. 
Lord. I can't believe yeah. this. Yeah. Anyway, let's go back to the complaint before we just keep roasting. <laughs> So a six-picture photographic array was shown to business employee Jesse. Remember, Jesse, guys, was the one who sold him, if I'm not mistaken, uh, <laughs> the, the sold him the mask, right? By Detective Cottom. Uh, Butchie Jikan, I'm just going to say Jesse, positively identified Diedrich Williams as the subject who purchased a black mask from him on 6-18-2018. <laughs> a second business employee, Terry Yoakum also saw the subject with the white tank top inside the business and started stated that he also knew him as a past customer. So not only did these guys go ahead and buy a ski mask from the same place that they saw X and they planned to rob him at, this dude was a repeat fucking customer and they knew who he was. Bro. <laughs> what are your thoughts on this jacket so far the $20 sandals is killing me <laughs> literally I can't I would never even buy that color ever in my life and I'm a girl like why would a guy wear bright orange sandals and then wear them not once but twice in his life like I wouldn't be caught dead and wear them to go and commit the, <laughs> most, the worst murder ever like the worst crime you could commit it's enough that he has tattoos all over his face and he's fat and like obviously why would you wear the same sandals twice and then post a picture after like you're so <laughs> dumb. I'm like all blown right. away. All right. Yeah. Uh, Ledrick in the chat, guys. Everyone call him Ledrick in the chat. Uh okay. A six picture. So uh a second. So Terry, right? So Terry Yokum also saw him in the store as well. Another store employee. A six uh, picture photographic array was shown to Terry Yokum by Detective Cottom, where he positively identified Diedrich Williams as a subject he saw purchase a blast mask from Jesse. So that's another L right there. So what do the police have at this point, guys? So so they have surveillance footage, right, of the individual. Then they go look on his Instagram and they see that he's wearing the same distinct orange sandals. Then on top of that, they're like, okay, we think this is the guy. So what do they do? They take six pictures with Diedrich in it. That's what a six photo array is, guys, of other black males that look like him. They show it to the store employees. Hey, can you pick out the person that bought the mask from you? Yes, I can. This guy right here. They positively identify Diedrich. Then they show it to another store employee. He also positively identifies Diedrich. So at this point, they got Diedrich dead to right. So for Diedrich, that's an L, my friends. So next thing you know, that police is about to turn to Scorpion soon. Get over here! So uh, let's keep going. A query of suspect Williams revealed that he is currently on felony probation for grand theft. Your affiant made contact with the Florida Department of Corrections and asserted Williams' current cell phone number is right here and his current address as 550 Northwest, Pompano Beach. Per the Florida Department of Corrections, this information was current as of 6-12-18. And looking on Diedrich Williams' social media sites, the heavyset blackmail entered into Riva Motorsports with on... Uh, on 618 was identified as who? Robert Allen. Okay. This guy right here. All right. So they were able to identify not only Diedrich, but they went ahead and they were able to identify this guy too. So um, so they looked at Diedrich Williams' social media sites and they figured out that the person that was with him was this guy. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of investigating ourselves. Let's see where they identified your boy. Is he in this picture? No, he ain't in this picture. We don't see them. Is he? He's right here. And you guys can see typical dummy shit. Oh Look at him. God. Flashing money. What a moron. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> here we go. Right here, guys. Um, you can see him. I think this is, uh, I think this is him in the back right here. Is uh, it's either this one or this one is Alan. Oh no, that's that's Newsom, I think. Yeah, there's Alan right there. Yeah, there's Alan. Robert Allen. Yep. There's the fat boy right there. So they looked at his Instagram and they were able to figure out, okay, this is who he is. <laughs> now I do want to make a note, guys, that this is prior to them killing X. This is on May 18, 2018. So this wasn't um this wasn't after they killed him. This was prior. A actually a one month prior. But there he is right there, Robert Allen. That's how they were able to figure it out. Because they saw him on the surveillance footage. They looked and they're like, okay, this is this him? And then, bam, they were able to figure it out who it is. Who it is. Okay? So, um, 
And he's a tattoo artist, as y'all can see. He wishes. Yeah, a uh, mediocre tattoo artist, but a tattoo. Yeah, you're you're a tattoo artist. What would this you? What you create his work? Actually, since you're an actual gutter trash. It's he's a scratcher. What's a scratcher? A scratcher is a tattoo artist that tattoos out of a house and has no cleanliness, no licenses, no. It hasn't studied anything. Hasn't taken a bloodborne pathogens test. They mm. they have no idea what they're doing. They could reuse dirty needles. They could. They basically learn in prison and then tattoo out of their house. That's as dis pathetic as you can be on the on the scale, scale of tattooing. So he's a he's a shit tier tattoo artist. Is what yeah. you're saying? You know, I, I, he he did go to jail a bunch of times, so that that would make sense. Yeah, he learned in prison, then went home, bought an Amazon machine for five ninety nine, and tattooed his homies and said he was a tattoo artist. Posted it on his Instagram, and people think he's legit, and they probably pay him fifty dollars a tattoo. Mm, fair <laughs> That's enough. A scratcher. Fair enough. And uh, gosh, she's a pretty good tattoo artist. Uh, I mean, do you want to drop her shop? I don't know. It's up to you. Yeah, Black Honey Tattoo. We're in Fort Lauderdale. Um, it's amazing. It's an all girls shop, actually, for females. It's pretty dope. They don't make them like that anywhere, actually, in the entire. Yeah, I don't have any state. any men in there. None? No boys. Yeah, all chicks. We're not like femme. Like we're not like against men, but it's just really cool. Like it's four females running it, and we're all super talented. It's dope so cool you are a good tattoo artist but uh, don't let don't let her fool you guys she talks more shit about women than anybody <laughs> bruh if y'all heard the shit she was saying before this show uh, we would be canceled she talks more shit than anybody else uh anyway <laughs> okay so on june 19 2018 a warrant for the arrest of michael boatwright was granted by the honorable judge ernest colera so they were able to go ahead and identify Michael Boatwright right away, and they identified Robert Allen. On June 20th, Dedrick Williams was taken into custody by BSO Viper units as he arrived at 550 Northwest 17th Street, which you guys know is his address. Suspect Dedrick Williams was uh, driving a silver 2004 Honda bearing Florida tag, etc., in the VIN, right? A records query revealed that his vehicle is registered to Tony Robinson at an address of 2581, etc. cetera. Uh, Tony Robinson identified herself as Dedrick Williams' sister, okay? Uh, okay. A girl named Tony is a first name. Interesting. So he gets arrested, guys. So let's go ahead and look at what happens when he gets arrested. This was his, his initial appearance. Dedrick Williams. The man arrested in connection with the shooting death of XXX Tentacion appearing in court today. Local 10 News reporter Terrell Fournay was in the courtroom today and reports from Fort Lauderdale. Well, it is a process that this murder suspect is very familiar with. He is a convicted felon who is already out on probation. And today, inside of this courthouse, the new... Which explains why he's a prison tattoo artist, as Jackie was saying. ...charges that he's accused of certainly came up. You can hear the clinging of the ankle and wrist shackles as Diedrich Williams was hauled into a Broward courtroom this morning, this time on charges that the 22-year-old violated the terms of his probation. Williams has a long rap sheet, cocaine possession, grand theft auto, aggravated assault with a firearm, and possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. They're missing the part about uh, possession of bright-ass sandals while committing a capital offense. Holy fucking L for this guy, bro. <laughs> in fact, he was on probation last week when detectives arrested him for driving without a license in Pompano Beach and first degree murder in connection with the killing of South Florida rapper XXX Tentacion. I pled him not guilty and uh, my claim he thinks is innocent. That's Williams' new private attorney, handpicked by his family, who was also in the courtroom today. The arrest report, which alleges first-degree murder, details a chilling encounter at a motorcycle dealership in Deerfield Beach one week ago today. The rapper, whose real name was Jose Onfroy, withdrew cash from a bank and was in the business shopping for a new ride. But as he left, several armed robbers cornered him in his luxury BMW and opened fire killing the famous musician. We've learned surveillance video at that dealership is a crucial piece of evidence. The crime scene has drawn hundreds, if not thousands of mourners since the death. Detectives say they tied Williams to the murder, but are not yet revealing how. Today, the defense team says it's a challenge they're willing to take on. It's difficult when you're, when you're dealing with, with, with media cases, because as he is right there, you know, dealing with media cases is tough when you're a defense attorney, but I mean, bro, they got an overwhelming amount of evidence. You know, they, they take a life of their own nowadays with social media, but we're really focused on, on trying this case in a court of law and not in the court of uh, public opinion. 
And this appearance happening just two days. Yeah, so uh, definitely L for your boy Diedrich wearing, um, I guess he took the, you know, he was listening to too much King Von. He heard, yeah, we going to slide, and he decided to wear slides to slide, which was not a smart move. So L for him, once again. Like I told y'all before, I told you there was going to be a lot of L's on this fucking show uh, with these guys. So let's keep going back onto the criminal complaint. So he gets arrested, right? Diedrich Williams gets arrested, right? A safety sweep of the residence was conducted, and the residence was unoccupied. During a sweep of the rear yard, a pair of orange sandals <laughs> <laughs> were observed and later seized. Okay? Nope. That was definitely stupid. Once at the public safety building, in a recorded interview to this detective, Williams first denied that he was at Riva Motorsports on 6-18-2018, but did advise that he was a regular customer at the location. No fucking shit. <laughs> Two of the employees were able to identify you, bro. <laughs> Williams then changed his story to the fact that he was at Riva Motorsports on 6-18-2018 and that he had arrived with his young younger daughter and a friend of his name, Fat Boy, in a gray Nissan four-door vehicle. Okay, my friend. Stop the cap. Once confronted with the fact that Riva Motorsports had an extensive video camera system. Yeah, this one right here, by the way. This camera system. In case y'all forgot, nigga, they got you in 4K. Like, what? <laughs> so they confronted him with this footage, right? Uh, once confronted with the fact that Riva Motorsports had an extensive video camera system, he again changed his story, admitting that he had not been telling this detective the truth. William stated that he was at his house. Okay, in Pompano Beach by uh, babysitting his children when several of his friends came by his house. William stated that a young black male named Sherrod from the neighborhood was cutting his grass, so he asked the subject to watch his children while he went to the Riva Motorsports. Williams then began to explain that he was with the subjects who tried to rob the victim, but that he had no knowledge in advance that the incident was going to occur. What? Okay, so you just... You just bought the fucking ski mask because, bruh. <laughs> oh Yo, man, dumbest criminals ever. This is fucking entertainment. I told y'all reading this court document was going to be entertainment, bro. All right, let's get back to it. <laughs> Williams admitted that he was wearing a light gray tank top t-shirt while at Riva Motorsports and that fat boy was wearing a dark colored shirt, a.k.a. we know who that is. That's this nigga right here, Robert Allen, all right, who was also on his Instagram post that we showed you guys earlier. Uh, William stated that what had happened at Riva Motorsports bothered him and that when he went home, he could not sleep. As this detective began to ask Williams the details of what had occurred, and the identity of the two gunmen, Williams stated that he wanted to tell the truth as to what occurred at Riva Motorsports, but wanted a lawyer with him when he did. Williams stated that he was fearful of being labeled a snitch when he went to prison. At that point, questioning was stopped by this detective. Bro, all I got to say is <laughs> search warrants were executed on the vehicle Williams was driving, a 2004 Honda Accord, and his residence uh, in Papano Beach. Several items were seized. Inside the vehicle was found a loaded 38 caliber revolver, which was readily accessible to Williams as he sat in the vehicle. Guys, this is another L. Because, as you guys know, you can't have a firearm when you're a convicted felon. Stupid. So, and that's a fe federal charge. That could be a federal charge right there. I I've arrested so many people for felon in possession of a firearm. Inside the residence, uh, a live 22 caliber round, okay, the same manufacturer brand as the spent casings recovered on the crime scene, several clothing items that still had tags on them, and a receipt for almost $800 of clothing purchased at Just for Sports in Fort Lauderdale the day after the robbery slash homicide. Guys, one more time through this. This is what they found at Diedrich Williams' house, okay? This idiot right here. AKA orange sandal guy. All right. They found a loaded 30 caliber, 38 caliber revolver, which was readily accessible to him. Right. He's a felon. Can't have that. So that's an L <laughs> next inside the house. They found a live 22 caliber round 
the same manufacturer brand as the spent casings recovered on the crime scene. So what was used to kill X, several clothing items that still had tags on them and a receipt for almost $800 of clothing purchased at just for sports in Fort Lauderdale the day after the robbery and homicide. So this idiot decided to go on a shopping spree <laughs> after the robbery. Oh my God. This detective spoke to Williams girlfriend, Tanel Williams. Tanel Williams did not want to give a recorded statement, but advised that Dedrick Williams had told her that he was with the two subjects who shot and killed the victim. Tanel Williams stated that Dedrick Williams identified the taller gunman as Boatwright, okay? And the smaller gunman as Trey. And that's Newsom, guys. Trayvon Newsom is who she's talking about. Tanel Williams stated that she knew the two gunmen from past contact and believed they lived somewhere in Fort Lauderdale. Tanel Williams also provided the, the, this detective an Instagram picture of the subject, Boatwright, off his Instagram account, YMTM Tug Boatwright, which is... The, so she ratted? Yeah, kind of. Whose real name was unknown at the time. The interview of Tanel Williams was witnessed by homicide detective Brian Tutler. She didn't want to give a recorded statement. But here's the Instagram right here, guys. It's private. Sorry. I tried to go ahead and get it. But as y'all can see, here he is right here. YMTM Tug, which is pause. That's a very strange Instagram name. Boatwright. But this is him. Okay. And as you guys know, just a reminder, this idiot right here. I remember seeing his Instagram when it was not private, actually. Yeah, he probably uh, made it private after they were looking for him because he got arrested uh, later on. Um, so now they knew who he was, right? Now they identified Boatwright. Investigation determined that roughly three hours later on the day of the murder at 6.55 p.m., a 2017 Blue Dodge Journey bearing Florida tag of WB whatever was involved in a hit and run on 3100 Northwest 19th Street in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. After the accident, several black males fled from the vehicle, including the driver. The driver returned to the vehicle shortly thereafter. It was identified by the Fort Lauderdale Police Department as Trayvon Newsom. Okay, this idiot right here. Uh, I think he's uh, in his early 20s. He looks so young. Yeah, 1998. The, this hit and run vehicle appeared to be identical to the suspect vehicle seen in the Revo Motorsports video. The Dodge Journey was towed and determined to be registered to a Tanisha Clark of Miramar, Florida. Clark was interviewed and advised that she rented her Dodge Journey on 6 17, 2018 at 8 p.m. on the phone app Turo to a black female named Tony Robinson for $60. Robinson was supposed to return a vehicle on 6-18-2018. Hold up. So let me get this straight. These idiots went ahead. Not only did they commit a murder, which is a capital offense in the state of Florida, punishable by death. These guys used a fucking Turo rental to do it. And they got an accident on the way home. Bro. <laughs> I, what are your thoughts on this? I just can't. The chat is killing me right now. <laughs> I'm sorry, but this is these guys are the dumbest men. If you want to, I can't even believe one of them has a girlfriend. Yeah, that's and, the one that and, it was their sister that rented the vehicle from Turo. It was Diedrich Williams' sister that rented the vehicle from Turo. And these guys went ahead and committed one of the worst offenses in a rental car <laughs> from Turo. Like the police can't figure out who the fuck rented the car to them, bro. Like I what? I can't believe this. Incredible. <laughs> In fucking incredible, man. Oh, man. All right. Let's keep going. All right. So just so y'all know, right? So just um, so you guys understand this. So the person that rented the vehicle, guys, was Diedrich Williams, a.k.a. Orange Sandal Guy's sister. Okay? This guy right here, his sister rented the, the Dodge Journey that they used to commit the, 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 the crime. So they were all in on this? Yeah. Oh, my God. Clearly, right? So also, I want to let y'all know, they went ahead and got into an accident at 3100 Northwest 19th Street. So I went ahead and pulled up this address for y'all. This is where they got into an accident. This is a pretty busy intersection, guys, in Fort Lauderdale. All right? You guys can see four-way intersection. Okay. Now, how far is this from Revo Motorsports? Uh, it is about, if I'm not mistaken, 20 minutes. Here it is right here. Oh my God. That is way too close. Yep. Oh my God. 
So I'm not okay. It's about 17 minutes away. So these guys were right here um, when they got into the accident. So this was a couple hours later after the, after they committed the crime. And these idiots decided to go. You would think, like, bro, let me not get in a, the, of all days to get in a car accident. Let me get in a car accident on the day that I committed one of the worst offenses. And on top of that, go back <laughs> after I hit the car and let the police identify who the hell I am. Bro, <laughs> these dudes. Anyway, let's continue on. And uh, we're going to continue on with the dumbest criminals of all time. All right. So uh, so they went ahead and they uh, got this car from tour, right? A tag reader on Pompano Beach recorded the Florida tag of the Dodge Journey, right? At 1200 Northwest 6th Avenue in Pompano Beach at 1.15 p.m. on 6-18-2018. This location is only a few blocks away from Diedrich Williams' house at 55 Northwest 17th Street in Pompano Beach and occurred only a few hours before the listed murder. So, guys, the vehicle, right, was in the vicinity of Diedrich Williams, a.k.a. Orange Sandals' house, two hours, about two hours prior to the murder. My friends, that is a clue that a conspiracy was taking place. All right? On 6-22-2018, a photo lineup was shown to Tanisha Clark, where she positively identified Tony Robinson, the woman who reported that she was Diedrich Williams' sister, as the subject who rented the Dodge Journey from her on 6-17. So they rented the vehicle the day prior and then committed a crime the next day. Bro. Stupid. Anyway. Tony Robinson. Remember, guys, Tony Robinson is the sister of Orange Sandals, a.k.a. Deidre Williams, was interviewed by the detective. In a sworn statement, she admitted that she rented the 2017 Dodge Journey, which is the vehicle they used to rob uh, Exxon. Robinson stated that she and Deidre Williams are not related, though she calls him her brother. What? <laughs> Wait, they planned everything except their outfits. What the fuck? I guess so. <laughs> Present with her during the rental was a subject she knew as Boatwright and another subject she knew as Big Rob. Robinson knew both individuals from multiple past contacts. Big Rob was identified Rob, uh, by Robinson from his driver's license photograph as Robert Allen. So let me get this right. This fucking chick, Diedrich's sister, allegedly, his, his, his sister rents a car from Turo not only does she rent the car from Turo, she shows up to rent the car with these two fucking ass clowns right here. Boatwright and Allen. Okay? They're with her when she rents the vehicle. How much do y'all want to bet that she was probably involved in this bullshit too? They just didn't have enough evidence to link her to the crime. But these idiots planned this shit. In my opinion. Let's continue on. But it's not what you know. It's what you could prove, right? The Instagram photograph provided by Tanel Williams was shown to Robinson, uh, whereas she identified that picture as the subject boat right. So remember, guys, they showed Tanel Williams. If I'm not mistaken, Tanel Williams is the girlfriend, right, of Diedrich. Diedrich. Robinson stated that on 6-17-2018, she left the Dodge Journey with Robert Allen and never saw the vehicle again. And Robinson is um, Diedrich's sister. She received a phone call the following day from Boatwright, who told her that Trey had wrecked the vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> Robinson stated that she knew the subject Trey uh, from past contact. She identified him from a photo array as Trayvon Newsom, 1998. This idiot right here. So Boatwright told his sister, Williams, yo, the car got wrecked. Trey crashed the shit. And he left it at this intersection right here, pretty much. Which I showed y'all before. Which is a pretty busy intersection. All right? And the Fort Lauderdale police ended up identifying this idiot from the accident. So once again, more L's for these four morons. On the day of Diedrich Williams' arrest, Robinson stated that she lent her 2004 Honda Accord bearing flag, uh, Florida tag, who cares, to him in Fort Lauderdale. When he entered the vehicle, he had in his possession a black backpack. This backpack was where the 38 caliber revolver was located the day of Williams' arrest. Robinson gave this detective consent to search the vehicle she rented, that being the 2017 Dodge Journey, blue in color. <sighs> 
Another witness that shows that he had. Why Why is that important, guys? The reason why that's important is because now they have an eyewitness that is proving that Diedrich Williams was in possession of a firearm as a felon. <laughs> Tony Robinson stated that uh, Robert that uh, Robert Allen's phone number was 754-308, whatever the fuck. A search warrant was obtained on 624-2018 for the 2017 Dodge Journey. Blue in color. They picked a blue car? Yeah, it was uh, dark blue. Okay. And fine. executing that search warrant, uh, latent and DNA swabs were taken from the vehicle. So the vehicle that they used, guys, to rob X, they went ahead and did a search warrant and they did uh, an, a forensic search on it for, you know, fingerprints and DNA. On 626, Tony Robinson, who again, remember guys, Tony Robinson is um, Diedrich Williams' sister, this clown, okay? Just so that you guys, I want to make sure that you guys always understand who I'm talking about, all right? Was shown a six-photo array where she identified Boatwright as Michael Boatwright. Robinson stated that she was sure of her identification of Michael Boatwright as he was a subject she had seen over 50 times in the past. And if you guys remember, Boatwright is the one that shot and killed X. Michael Boatwright's fingerprints were later Matched by BSO latent print examiner Jennifer Rodriguez, the latent, latent uh, prints lifted from the exterior driver's door uh, of the listed Dodge Journey. Holy! So now, what does this mean, guys, right here? This is very, very fucking important, okay? Because now, not only do the police have a witness saying that Boatwright was there when they rented the vehicle, not only do they have Someone who matches his stature on camera shooting X. Now they have the vehicle. They did a search warrant. They lifted it for prints. And guess what? They find this ass clown's fingerprints in the vehicle. L for Boatwright. He wore gloves during the shooting, but didn't think to wear gloves when he was in the vehicle that was used to commit the shooting. <laughs> what? I can't even believe this. <laughs> Yo, I don't think I've hit this many fails I've never. on an episode ever. He literally was connected <laughs> with irrefutable evidence to the murder fucking vehicle, bro. <laughs> I can't believe All right, let's keep going. On 626-2018, the young black male who babysat Diedrich Williams' children was identified as Sherrod Clayton. Remember, guys, in uh, Diedrich's statement, he said that Sherrod came up and babysit his kids? Well, there's more to the story. Okay, guys? Because Diedrich Stop the cap. wasn't telling the full truth. Sherrod was interviewed and in a sworn statement admitted that he was Diedrich Williams' uh uh, Diedrich Williams asked him to babysit while he went to Revo Motorsports. Clayton stated that Williams left with three other black males in a blue Dodge journey. Clayton described the three other black males as subjects that he had never seen before and that one of the subjects was almost 400 pounds. I wonder who he's talking about. <laughs> he's talking about Alan's fat ass. One of the subjects was tall and thin, and the last subject was a shorter with a slight build. The tall guy is Boltwright. Clayton stated when Williams returned, the other subjects dropped him off and left. Clayton stated that Wims paid him with a $100 bill for babysitting. Crazy. <laughs> Clayton was shown four photo arrays, but was only able to identify Diedrich Williams from those photo lineups. The clothing store receipt found at Diedrich Williams' house was identified as just for sports in Fort Lauderdale. Contact was made with the clerk, Yoleni Delgado, who handled the transaction. Delgado advised that she remembered the transaction and that the subject was a regular customer who paid that day on 6-19-2018 with eight $100 bills. So you would think the day after committing a capital offense, yo, let me lay low. I probably shouldn't spend this money like that. I should probably hide out a little bit. You know, take it easy. What does this guy do? Yo, fuck it. I'm about to go to the store, spend $800 cash with the $100 bills that I stole from a rapper who literally just got the dollar bills fresh from the bank. YOLO. I'm living life on the edge. Remember, this guy claims, I couldn't sleep that night. Bruh. Stop the cap. Anyway, let's keep going. Yeah, I guess he threw away the orange slipper. 
<laughs> Yo, I knew you guys were going to have fun on with this one in the chat. Yo, there's 2,000 y'all in here, by the way. We got 1.1K likes. I don't want to stop the show for it to get the likes up, guys. Just get me up to 100% engagement, man, so we can keep reading through this thing, At okay? Sleep the country. <laughs> All right. Uh, Delgado had learned about Dedrick Williams' arrest in the media before the statement and identified Dedrick Williams from his booking photo that was used in the media after the arrest. Store video was obtained of the transaction at Just for Sports the day after the robbery slash murder, and it shows Dedrick Williams wearing the same or similar bright orange sandals <laughs> that he was wearing at Riva Motorsports the day before. Bro! <laughs> what is wrong with you? Bro? Yo, can you do me a favor, Jackie? Can yeah. you pull up uh, Just for Sports in Fort Lauderdale? Uh, on Google, and then give me the address, and I'll pull it up for the people here on Google Maps, just so they know where this was. Not to be mentioned, not to be confused with Riva Sports. Just for sports in Fort Lauderdale. Yeah, just for sports, Fort Lauderdale. A search warrant was obtained for Dedrick Williams' cell phone, which was in his possession at the time of his arrest. Several items related to the listed homicide were located on files on the cell phone. They included the following. A video dated 6 20 2018, which shows Dedrick Williams dancing with a large amount of $100 bills, which he throws out on the floor in front of him. Williams' cell phone shows that this video was created on 6 18 2018 at 11 20 p.m. at his house based on GPS. Guys, <clears throat> imagine two days after the murder, okay? Dancing with a large amount of $100 bills, which he throws out on the floor in front of him. William's cell phone shows that this video was created on 6-18. Oh, uh, it was it was created on 6-18 at 11-20 p.m. So, eight hours after killing X, he's at his house throwing the money around. And just for you guys, I got the clip right here. Shout out to Sonny V2. This is a pretty good YouTube channel here, guys. He does... Um, Pretty good breakdowns on YouTubers and, you know, current events, etc. And he actually has a clip of this. So, uh, shout out to him. Like his content as well. I'm going to play the clip for you guys here. Let's enlarge this. Disgustingly, in the hours after X's death, Dedrick Williams, one of the suspects, would record a video of himself happily dancing around with a bunch of $100 bills, also spending $800 on designer clothes at a Fort Lauderdale store the day after the killing. Sim Disgustingly, in the hours after X's One more time, look at that. He's throwing the money around like an idiot. Death. Dedrick Williams, one of the suspects, would record a video of himself happily dancing around with a bunch of $100 bills, also spending $800. Fucking. L. L, L, L. Let's get back to the, to the thing. What's the address for the place? 6215 North Andrews Ave. 6215? Yeah, North Andrews Avenue, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Three through three oh nine. They basically stayed in the same area all. So this is it right here, just for sports. So this is where he came to make those purchases. As you guys can see, it looks like yeah, it's like an outwear store. They got they Echo Limited. What the <laughs> fuck? People still wear that shit. <laughs> what the f yo? Okay, I could tell just off that. This is a probably a hood ass store. This is a hood ass store. Yeah, this is the K Swiss. At least there's Puma. What the f? All right, okay. It's yeah, probably it's... next to the Dollar General and a let's, a uh, laundromat. Yeah, it's got to be. This is what the let's. You could tell a lot about what's in this plaza. All right, they got a LA Fitness, AT and T, Walk Ons, Gyro. Oh, Bill. Cypress Creek. Okay, this you, is where the movie theater is. Is this a good area? You're from Fort Lauderdale. Um, there's a side of Andrews that turns scary. Okay. All right. So is this area good at least? No. No, this is okay. Well, that explains why they sell fucking Echo Unlimited. I wouldn't go over there. What the hell? This is man, L store. Okay. Yeah, this pod this whole podcast is just an L. Oh, I mean the podcast is a W, but I mean like this whole situation is an L for these fucking idiots. All right, let's keep going. <sighs> A video dated, uh, okay, so we got him dancing with a $100 bill. So a video dated uh, 6, 8, 6 19, 2018 was looking at Deidre Williams' phone. The video shows a person sitting in the driver's seat of a vehicle holding a large amount of $100 bills in both hands. This clear video shows that the person depicted in the video is Deidre Williams, not Robert Allen, as first believed. The video shot from the unknown passenger of the vehicle. All right, GPS on Williams' cell phone shows that at 3.54 p.m., he was at Riva Motorsports in Deerfield Beach. This time is one minute before the shooting occurred. 
Bro, they got him <laughs> dead to fucking rights. And I told y'all before, this is why they're going to find YNW Melly guilty. They got YNW Melly on, on, on this as well with phone location data, bro. Phone location data is irrefutable. You can't say, oh, bro, I wasn't there. No, motherfucker, you were there. You were there. All right? And if, and if he didn't have his phone on him, the phone would be home. Not at a random fucking motorsports store a minute before X is about to get killed. Google searches on Diedrich Williams' cell phone a few hours before the listed homicide show searches for a variety of guns, such as machine guns, Mac 11, <laughs> Tech 9, and AR-15. This is Eldrick. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The live round recording in Diedrich Williams' residence at 550 in Pompano was confirmed by firearm and tools examiner Williams Ruiz Fontanas to having been cycled at one point through the murder weapon. Guys! One more time. This is very important evidence. Very, very important evidence. The live round recovered in Williams' residence, okay, Diedrich Williams, a.k.a. Eldrick Williams, a.k.a. Orange Sandal Guy, <laughs> was confirmed by a firearm and tools examiner to having been cycled at one point through the murder weapon. That's a W piece of evidence. I've explained this before. I'll say it one more time for all the new viewers that aren't aware. When you shoot a gun, right, and a bullet is ejected, what happens is the bullet, right, that gun leaves a fingerprint on that bullet, okay, through the barrel, etc. So it effectively identifies, right, that this ammunition came out of this gun, all right, because each gun has its own distinct pattern and grooves in the barrel, so that when it's fired, the police can effectively link spent shell casings from the murder scene, from the murder scene or the crime scene, to if they have the farm and they do a ballistic test, they shoot that gun. And then they compare the shell casings. They can effectively say, yo, this was fired from the same gun. So what they basically proved is that they had spent shell casings from the gun that was used to kill X that was found where? In Diedrich's house. No. <laughs> All right. John Hancock, shout out to you. I hope the violence culture in America ends. Too many of us are quick to weapons. Stay safe, Myron. I try, bro. Um, okay video from the Driftwood Apartments in Fort Lauderdale was obtained and examined this video showed the traffic uh, crash at 3100 street, uh, 19th Street in Fort Lauderdale at 6.48pm involving the suspect vehicle this traffic crash is approximately 3 hours after the listed homicide the one time you're not supposed to get in a car accident is after you commit a murder of a famous rapper 20 minutes away. Idiots. All right. Uh, before the crash, the suspect vehicle is seen driving east on Northwest 17 Court at 425 p.m. from Northwest 37th Avenue, which is 25 minutes after the listed murder. Then the suspect vehicle comes back westbound, arriving at the Driftwood apartment complex and is seen being backed into a, a parking space at 530 p.m., which is an hour and a half after the murder. Two black males exit the Driftwood Apartments on foot past security cameras as they exit the suspect vehicle. The same two black males are seen going into residential area east of Northwest 31st Avenue on Northwest 17th Court. As they walk by the cameras leaving the complex, the two black males turn towards the cameras and appear to be Michael Boatwright and Trayvon Newsom. Got him. Fucking got him. Gotcha, bitch. The subject in the video, who appears to be Michael Boatwright, is wearing black high-top sneakers, a camouflage baseball hat, camouflage shorts and a black t-shirt with the word champion printed on it. Wow. The suspect vehicle then leaves the Driftwood apartment. So remember guys, they got these two idiots on camera. Michael Boatwright and Newsom. These guys are from Fort Lauderdale guys. All right. So that's why they were in that area. That's the area where they live. Oh my God. So they got them on fucking camera now. Right. Um, let's see here. The suspect vehicle then leaves the complex and travels east on Northwest uh, 17 Court and a minute later comes back uh, on Northwest 17 Court 
and then northwest uh north on northwest 31st avenue just before the traffic crash several black males are seen exiting the suspect uh vehicle after the crash one of the subjects believed to be trayvon newsom who exits out the front passenger door after climbing from the driver's seat the second black male is a heavy set black male wearing a red shirt and light pants the second black male built are consistent with the build of robert allen so fat ass is with them when they get in the accident the residential area east of Northwest 37th Avenue is a dead-end street. There are approximately two dozen houses on this dead-end street. Robert Allen's residence, 3060 Northwest 17th Court, is the third house from the intersection of Northwest 31st Avenue on Northwest 17th Court. Bro. Not only did these guys commit a crime, but they crashed right in front of one of the suspect's houses. Bro. Oh so many L's in this fucking crime. Like, <laughs> I can't even believe this. Yo, these guys are the worst criminals ever, man. This residential area east of Northwest 31st Avenue of Northwest. Uh, oh, no, got that one. Sorry. The contacts in Diedrich Williams' cell phone contained the known cell phone number of Trayvon Newsom under the name Trey Tay Trey. Trayvon Newsom used the same phone number. In 2016, when he was a victim in an aggravated battery, and in 2017, when he was arrested. So that's how they, they were able to identify him. And looking at the contacts in Diedrich Williams' cell phone, the known cell phone number for Michael Boatwright is, etc. cetera, Little Boat. Michael Boatwright used this same phone number, 754-207-1410, for the pre-trial release phone number in 2018. Bro. So let me explain to you guys why this is important. What they're effectively able to do is Ty Diedrich Williams to these three other individuals because he has all their phone numbers in his phone. And on top of that, when the police query these phone numbers, they see, oh, all of these guys have criminal records. They have all been arrested and or come up in police reports. So now we know that they're really the users of these cell phones. So not only did these guys commit these crimes, wear orange sandals, buy ski mask at the same store where they committed the crime at, Buy a bunch of shit the day after $800, have video of themselves throwing around $100 bills dancing, get into a fucking car crash a block away from where they live, okay? These idiots also had all their real phone numbers communicating with each other. Oh, my God. All right. Let's continue on. Uh on June 27, 2018, a search warrant was auth uh, authored to obtain Michael Boatwright's DNA, fingerprints, and photographs. The search warrant was signed by the Honorable Judge Bernie Bobber. On July 5, 2018, Michael Boatwright was located by members of the BSO Viper Unit and detained so that the search warrant could be executed. At the time of the detention, Boatwright was in possession of a felony controlled substances and as well as two cell phones. Bro. So when they found him, he had drugs on him. That's an L. Going to jail. Okay? Because at this point, I don't think they had the arrest warrant for him yet. But now they can hold him and put him in jail. And they seize both of his cell phones. Right? And it has the same phone number, 754-207-1410. That was also in who? Diedrich, a.k.a. Eldrick's phone, the guy that had the orange sandals, who they already identified as one of the suspects. In a recorded statement after Miranda writes, Boatwright stated that he had never, and guys, Miranda writes says, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say could be used against you in a court of law. Anytime someone, a police arrests you or you're not free to go, they have to read your Miranda rights before they ask you questions where you can incriminate yourself. So they read him his rights, and he stated that he had never been to Riva Motorsports or in or around a Blue Dodge journey. <laughs> Boatwright stated that he knew where the Driftwood apartments were, but had never been in them and had only driven, driven by them. Guys. Stop the cap. Boatwright lists his address as 1617 Northwest 15th Street in, 14, in Fort Lauderdale in his last arrest in 2015 and with BSO pre-trial services in 2018. BSO pre-trial services as of June 2018 said that Boatwright is living at this location. Now remember, guys, okay? He said, he told the police he's never been to Riva Motorsports and or in or around a Blue Dodge journey. But we know that the girl that rented the Dodge Journey, a.k.a. L. E. Diedrich, L. Liedrich, right? His mm. sister, who did she rent the vehicle with? She went with Boatwright and she went with Newsom. 
And just so you guys, if you so you guys don't forget who these idiots are, this guy, Boltwright, and Newsom, right? Or no, no, Allen. These two went with her, right? So, oh, let me show it on screen. Sorry, guys. These two guys, right? So, Allen and Boltwright went with the girl to rent the vehicle. But this idiot says, yo, I was never, I never been to Riva Motorsports or in or around a Blue Dodge journey. And he said he knew where the Driftwood apartments were, but had never been in them and had only driven by them. Well, obviously, we know that's a lie because they crashed right next to the Driftwood apartments and ran by them when they were trying to get away. Bro. All right. Barra advised that he lived at the location with his grandmother, Nadine Isaac. Past police reports in 2017 show that Nadine Isaac does live at that location. On July 6, 2018, a search warrant was authored for uh, 1617 Northwest 15th Street in Fort Lauderdale. The search warrant was signed by the Honorable Judge Fine. Now, you guys are probably wondering, why are they searching 1617 Northwest 15th Street? Well, guys, that's because this is Boatwright's house. Okay, his grandma lives there, but it's his house. All right? The search warrant was signed by the Honorable Judge Fine. At the location, two vehicles were found in the carport area on the curtilage of the address, one being a 1997 Cadillac with no tag and a VIN. Uh, and the uh, which we don't care about, and other being a 2009 Nissan Altima. Well, we already know Nissan Altima. You already know they from the hood. Inside the residence of Michael Boltwright's bedroom uh, was found a pair of what? Camouflage shorts, a pair of black long pants, and a pair of black high top sneakers. Well, we know on the surveillance footage, right? Going back to the surveillance footage. What is Boltwright wearing? Black high top sneakers, as y'all can see. Two passengers come out. Are those Air Forces? A short barreled rifle. The you can see Newsom right there. Like Black gun. high tops. Uh, testimonial evidence is they're trying to get the victim to remove his chain that's around it. And then you can see black high tops here. Those look like some Jordans right there that Newsom's wearing. And then Boltwright is a taller one, guys. You guys can see right here, right? Yep. Hold on. All right, he's going to rewind the footage back. Let's see. Yeah, those got to be black Air Forces. All right, so he's going to rewind it. He's going to move his head out the way. Give it a second. All right, look, there's the black high-top sneakers right there that Boatwright's wearing. And Newsom also was wearing black high-top sneakers. I guess they had to protect their ankles while they were doing this. Yeah, those are Air Forces. Protect. I can see the middle... I can see the little tag that comes on the middle. Yeah, those are... <laughs> Yo, what? So dumb. My man really committed the robbery of black air forces, bro. No, guys, remember, Boltwright wasn't the one that wore that worn slippers. He's he's not Liedrich. He's not Diedrich. All right? Boltwright is this idiot right here. This is the guy that wore the orange slippers. He was in the car the whole time. I think he was the driver. Because remember, his sister... Rented the vehicle, so he was the driver. These two idiots were in the uh, that were the ones that actually did the robbery. All right? Don't get confused. That's why I'm continuously showing you guys their pictures, so you guys don't forget who's who. You know who the four idiots are. All right. All right. Uh, so they found the high top sneakers for Bolt Right inside the garbage bin in the carport of the residence was found another discarded pair of black long pants and a receipt for over $400 of clothing and shoes purchased on 7-1-2018. So, he also went spending and bought some shit. Cash. Stop. Nadine Isaac, who was present at the location, remember guys, this is Boatwright's grandma, I think, advised that both vehicles belonged to her and her grandson, Michael Boatwright, and had no standing for either vehicle. Isaac advised that the 1997 Cadillac with no tag and a VIN had not been generational for several years. Since both vehicles were on the curtilage of the address, Isaac provided this detective the keys to each vehicle. Once the truck of the 1997 Cadillac with no tag and a VIN was opened in plain view, was observed an AR-15 type assault weapon sitting atop of a, uh, another soft gun cases. The vehicle was secured for the issuance of a search warrant so that it could be towed to the BSO Crime Laboratory at 201 Southeast Street in Fort Lauderdale for further processing. The vehicle will be towed to the BSO Crime Lab by Max Towing once the search warrant was executed on the 1997 Cadillac, several items related to the listed case were recovered. Those included. So this was in the vehicle, guys. So he put it in the Cadillac. Two dark colored masks, one of which is consistent with the black mask Diedrich Williams purchased on 618. 
a 22 caliber ammunition with a manufacturer brand, the same as the spent casings found at the crime scene. Uh, <clears throat> and okay. Yeah. So those are the two things they found. Also guys, what did they also find? Look <laughs> at this. They found AR type assault weapon sitting atop. Okay. Well, let's go back to the surveillance footage. What the hell is he coming up on him with? That ain't that ain't that's like a assault rifle type joint. That's not a pistol. That's like a pistol, um, like a pistol AR. Look at that. That's probably what they found. Okay. And actually the detective says this. Let me put the sound back on for y'all. Literally blocks them, two passengers come out. The taller one's got a short barreled rifle. The taller one has a short barreled rifle. Well, we know that could easily be this right here. Air type assault weapon sitting on top. All right. And it had 22 caliber ammunition, which is the same brand as what was found at the crime scene. And they found this 22 caliber ammunition where? At your boy Diedrich's house. And they found a mask, which is consistent with what Diedrich bought. So L, once again. A search warrant was obtained for Michael Boatwright's black iPhone with number assigned 754-207-1410. Once the phone was downloaded, was examined, several items related to the listed homicide were located on files on a cell phone. They included the following. Oh, this is about to be good. Location files on Boatwright's cell phone showed that cell phone was at the following locations on 6-18-2018. On 6-18-2018 at 1-18 p.m. and 3-03 p.m., Boatwright's cell phone was located at where? 550 Northwest 17th Street in Pompano Beach. Diedrich Williams' home address. <laughs> on 6-18-2018, from 3-30 p.m. to 3-56 p.m., Boatwright's cell phone is located at 66 Northeast 37th Street in Deerfield Beach. Riva Motorsports. This time frame coincides with when the suspect vehicle arrives and leaves at Riva Motorsports on the day of the homicide. <laughs> on 6-18-2016, at 4-23 p.m., Boatwright's cell phone is located at 3070, I think they mean 2018. This was an error from the detective. Uh, at 3070 Northwest 17 Court in Fort Lauderdale, this location is the house next to Robert Allen's home address. This time frame is consistent with when the suspect vehicle is turning east on Northwest 2017 Court as seen on the cameras at the Driftwood Apartments. Well, hold on one second. <laughs> Didn't Boatwright say earlier when he was interviewed, right? His dumbass said, yo, bro, I never been to Riva Motorsports in or in around the Blue Dodge journey. But you go back and you look at his cell phone data. He was at Riva Motorsports on the day of the murder from 3.05 to 3.56 p.m. And he was uh, at Diedrich's house prior. And he was at Driftwood Apartments, even though he said, yo, I just drove by, but I never actually been there, bro. Oh, that's a. Oh, actually, his, you uh, want to pull it up? Okay, can you uh, go ahead and uh, send me? This is. That's where it is. The Pompano Beach location. I'm. All right, they want me to pull up. Uh, you want me to wait? Hit five fifty. Sorry. Oh, yeah, that's this Northwest dude's house. Nah, we don't got to show his house. I mean, it's just, that's Diedrich's house. It's just you want to just show how shitty it is? The Driftwood Apartments too. Oh, or, the Driftwood or, Apartments. So I can't figure out which one it is, but it looks like it. Didn't he mention Lauder Hill Point? It's in, yeah, Driftwood Apartments at Fort Lauderdale. I think it's this one. Okay. What's the Addy on it? Um, here, I'll pull up the address for you guys since we keep mentioning it here. I just had to see where these people were coming right. from. You know, actually, I'll just type it in. Driftwood Apartments, Fort Lauderdale. That's what I got for Lauder Hill Point. Lauder Hill Point. Okay. Dude, can I even drop the man here so that we can look at this shit? Let's see here. Lauder Hill Point. It looks crazy right here. Yeah. This Where's, is probably it right here. This area. See the windows? You're on it. See it? Yeah. Right yeah I see it. Yep. Those are weird windows. It's to protect people from coming in. I guess so. Ha <laughs> ha God damn, that's how you know you're in the hood, man. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, this is scary when you look at it. Okay. And you're from Fort Lauderdale. Would you ever go into this area? No. It's insane that, like, look at this. 
Yeah, that, that is wild. I'm good. <laughs> Fair enough. The Italian girl is not going there. I would never. All right. Uh, this time frame is consistent when the suspect vehicle is turning point. Okay. Uh, on 621 on Boatwright's cell phone, does searches on... Oh, shit. So he does a search, right? Uh, on the uh, uh, on the victims by his nickname, which I don't know why they redacted this, but it should be XX Tentacion. So he did a search on X's name on 621, three days after the murder. And on 629, Boatwright's cell phone does searches on accessory to murder. <laughs> <laughs> bro. They got this guy, bro. Dead to fucking rights. Several photographs on, of Michael Boatwright taken on 618, 2018, and 925 p.m. and 1016 p.m. in which he is wearing the same black high-top sneakers, a camouflage baseball hat, camouflage shorts, and a black t-shirt with the word champion printed on it. Boatwright is holding a large amount of $100 bills fanned out in front of him in the picture. All the evidence is on this dude's fucking phone, man. A similar photograph taken on 618 at 9.26 p.m. of Trayvon Newsom holding a large amount of $100 bills. In this photograph, Newsom is wearing the same clothing that he has seen wearing at the Driftwood Apartments when he exits the suspect vehicle. Remember, when they got in that crash. Based on the above facts, there's probable cause to believe that Michael Boatwright is the taller gunman who executed the, who ex, uh, exited the passenger side of the suspect vehicle on 618 and attempted to rob the victim at gunpoint. And then, bam, there's your Afghan signature. Uh, and they signed it. And then um, the judge signed it. Martin S. Fien, And this was on July 10, 2018. So they got him dead to rights, bro, with all the shit they found on his phone. They found... The location data showing that he was at the Driftwood apartment. He's over here searching a sex to murder on his phone. He's over here searching X's name. He, um, They got him on location data with Riva Sports. He was at Diedrich Williams' house. <laughs> like, bro, this is an L all around, my friends. Um, so, okay. So the most updated stuff, guys. So your boy Robert Allen started to feel the heat. So what does he do? Well, he does what everyone does when they get hit with a murder charge. One of the co-defendants in the murder of rapper Tentacion has accepted a plea deal. He will testify for the state. Robert Allen pleaded guilty. He will testify against his co-defendants. He is still looking at a possible life sentence, but hopes for less time. Surveillance video showed Allen outside of the motorcycle dealership on Dixie Highway in Deerfield. And that's where XXX Tentacion was shot and killed back in 2018. So that is an L. That's an L for them. And here, right here, guys, is his uh, plea deal uh, for Robert Allen. Okay. So state, this is, a, this is the, uh, this is the uh, prosecutor. Here's the case number, Robert Allen, defendant. Um, this is his defense attorney, Jay Lewis. So he goes, entered a plea of guilty to the following crimes. Murder second degree with a firearm, armed robbery with a firearm. So he did that, guys, so he can avoid the death penalty and hopefully not get life. Okay, so he uh, pled guilty to second degree murder, which means it's not premeditated. Um, and he did this on what day? I think this was in August. Uh, yeah, so August 16, 2022. So he pled guilty, and um, yeah, he's going to testify against them, guys. So all I got to say for the rest of them, more than likely, this is my prediction, Michael Boatwright is going to get the death penalty, 100%. He was the one that fired the shots that actually killed X. Newsom, probably going to get life because he uh, was in. Uh, he actually took the money and robbed X, um, and... Diedrich Williams, if he better cooperate and snitch, because if he doesn't, he's going to get life too. So he's going to have to go ahead and cooperate as well. If he testifies, he might save himself. He was the smartest to go ahead and come first and and uh, cooperate because he got hit with murder in the second degree. More than likely, Williams is going to get hit with murder in either the first or second degree. Um, if he cooperates, he might get murdered in the second degree, which means it's not premeditated, which means a death a penalty is off the table. These two idiots, though, they're going to hit with murder in the first degree. Because they were the ones that actually committed the robbery. And Boatwright, I guarantee, more than likely is going to get the death penalty. So that is my prediction. So, uh, yeah, man, that is the case in general, guys. As you guys can see, you can look this up on, on Broward 
uh, clerk.org, you know, each of their cases, here's Williams Diedrich, right? Shows all the, all their cases. It's kind of like Patriot is with the Fed case. Uh, you got uh, Michael Boatwright. You got um, Alan Robert or Robert Allen in this case, and then Newsom Trayvon. And uh, interesting thing as well is that um, Trayvon Newsom was the last one to get arrested. And I want to show you guys uh, like their demeanor in court. So this is when Robert Allen and Boltwright got arrested. Next charge in the murder of rapper XXX Tentacion. So we showed Diedrich when he got arrested. Now these are the other two that got arrested. Fat boy and the shooter. We're back in court today. Local 10 News reporter Alex Finney was at their hearing and reports from Fort Lauderdale. Lawyers waived a speedy trial for Robert Allen. He's just one of four people connected to the murder of South Florida rapper Jose Anfroy, best known as XXX Tentacion. Robert Allen and Michael Boatwright appeared in court today. Look at these two guys, bro. Dusty as fuck, man. <laughs> Bruh, y'all stole $50,000 and you guys still look like this? God damn. He's so proactive. Holy. <laughs> yeah, this is the guy that killed X, and then this is the fat boy that was... um driving and keep in mind these two idiots are the ones that went to go get the dodge journey with diedrich's sister the struggle right beard. appeared in court today boat rights defense argued that competency has not been decided for his client just yet in chilling surveillance video you see xxx tentacion walking into riva motorsports with a louis vuitton bag this was back on june 18th he learned he had gone to the bank in uh, up in coral springs parkland area and had withdrawn $50,000. Soon after they walked in, you then see a Dodge Journey pull up in the parking lot. Detectives say four people were in that truck. You then see Allen get out with Dedrick Williams. They enter Riva, walking right past XXX Tentacion. Some time goes by and the two exit ahead of X. They stay parked in that street for 10 minutes. And then just as X leaves, the Dodge blocks him in. As he comes to the gate to leave, uh, before he can even make his turn, he's going to get cut off by the suspect vehicle. Boatwright and Newsom rob X at gunpoint, while Allen and Williams wait inside the SUV. As for Boatwright, we know they're waiting on the 3rd, 18th. He learned he had gone to the bank and, in uh, hold on. withdrawing $50,000. Soon after they walked. And I think that's the detective right there. I think that's the guy that arrested these guys. Um, so W for him, bro, for fucking getting these dudes. Because he's testifying about the um, he's testifying on the surveillance fo footage. So I'm assuming he's probably more than likely the lead detective on the case. Uh, and you could tell right, that he because he has his ammunition thing right here. That he's the detective um, <laughs> They got these fucking clowns. Uh, best believe Alan started talking when he was offered Burger King in the plea. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that's fucking funny, man. Um, and then this is Newsom right here, guys. When they got him, look at how he doesn't give a fuck. This dude. Well, the fourth and final suspect is now in custody. And he was the last one to get arrested. He surrendered, I think, a month later. Connection with the murder of rapper XXX Tentacion. Local 10 News reporter Alex Finney is live in Fort Lauderdale, where that man just went before a judge. Alex. Yeah, Trayvon Newsom turned himself into authorities last night. And just about an hour ago, he faced the judge for the first time. Trayvon Newsom showing no emotion in this Broward County courtroom today as the judge read off his charges. You are charged with one count of murder in the first degree. There's wow. no bond hold. And you also have robbery with a firearm. The judge ruled no bond for Newsom, who is the fourth and final suspect in the murder of famed rapper XXX Tentacion. X was shot in front of Riva Motorsports in Deerfield Beach back on June 18th. Authorities say the four suspects targeted the rapper in a planned ambush and stole his Louis Vuitton bag, carrying $50,000 in cash. A shrine-like tribute quickly formed in front of Riva as fans mourned the rapper's death. It just made me really sad to see all of this happen. The other three, Robert Allen, Dedrick Williams, and Michael Boatwright, have already been arrested. Allen was captured on surveillance video at Riva on the day of the murder. Newsom. Also, just to let y'all know, Allen's fat ass got picked up in Georgia. He hid at his sister's house and the U.S. Marshals went and got him. So they weren't fucking around, bro. I ain't gonna lie. I'm gonna give Broward County Sheriff's Office, bro. <laughs> Marco. I know y'all hate the police and everything, but they had these idiots arrested within weeks, bro. Like literally within like uh, like two weeks, they had these guys indicted, bro. So, hey, man, I, I got to give them a W for getting these fucking idiots arrested so quickly. Turned himself into deputies last night at his lawyer's office in Fort Lauderdale. 
And now as for those other three men, we have learned that their next appearance in court will be in October. Live in Port So, yeah, so they're probably going to try to fight this thing. They're going to take an L. Y'all read the evidence. You know what I mean? We actually broke down the entire uh, case here on this one. So y'all already know that's an L for them. So let's go ahead and look at some of these. I'm going to read some of these super chats real quick. Um, and thank you guys so much for the support, man. I really do appreciate it greatly. Um, Kieran Rodgers goes, best believe Alan started talking when he was offered the Burger King. Yep. <laughs> you guys are hilarious. Uh, in the plea, 10 bucks for Mike James goes, these guys make Nina the Dumb Apple look smart. <laughs> Top Jew needs mod. Yes or yes, that's for Mike James. Okay. Danny Dan goes, X was once in a lifetime, was a once in a lifetime talent. Myron, we need an episode on the FTX collapse. So much breakdown in that story. Okay. Free Willy with the big uh, nope. Nope. Thank you. Orlando Ali, everyone make uh, who makes jokes isn't your enemy, uh, I guess. And that's from Orlando Ali, two bucks. Yo, guys, do me a quick favor. I'm looking right now. There's 2,000 y'all watching, and we only got 1.3K likes. This case took a lot of time and a lot of research. All right. Can you guys do me a quick favor and just hit the smash, smash that like button? You don't got to donate a dollar to the show. You don't got to become a member. You don't even got to comment. The only thing I ask is that you like the video because it really helps with the algorithm because fed it. I guess, I don't know what it is, if I'm shadow banned or whatever it may be, but this type of content, I don't think YouTube likes it too much because I keep it pretty raw and I show a lot of crime footage, which could be sensitive in nature. A lot of my stuff gets yellow marked, which is fine. And it is what it is. But all I ask is that you guys like the video. If you want, also leave a comment below saying for the algo, something like that, because it really does help push the video. All right. You don't have to donate a dollar to the stream. All I ask is that you like the video. And if you really like me, you would hit for the algo down in the comment section. I really appreciate it. Anyway, let's keep going. Uh, okay. Uh, we got here. Um, everyone who makes a joke. Okay. Sup, Myron? I was watching old After Hours, and boy, do I miss some of the old sounds like Hun Hun Hun, the turkey joint, and the ninja mask segment, man. LOL. And that's from Wavy Rich. We got you, man. Frostlight goes, Sup, Myron? I'm just tuning in, but do you have any plans to break down the Sousa of Rico arrest? I think it would be really interesting. Yes, I will do it, guys, but you got to remember that I'm getting so many requests for different cases. And right now, you guys want serial killers. That's the, that's, y'all want serial killers and rapping, rapper cases. So I'm just giving the people what they want. W New Top Jew Mod. Okay. Thoughts on the conspiracy theories on this death? Uh, I don't believe it. Like, it's clear cut evidence that they, these guys conspired to kill him to make some money. Uh, Jonathan Hogu, 10 bucks. Help me, Howard. Couldn't help these idiots. Yeah, facts. Uh, uh, I thought I hope that the I hope that the violence culture in America. Okay, read that one before. That was from John Hancock. Pick Api goes. Not only did these highly visible hazmat flip flops give it up, but he also went in displaying all his tats. Yes, very stupid. Stupid. I'm dying that the thing that bothers her most about this situation is the color of the sandals. <laughs> uh, can you do Jason Van Dyke case? Sandals matches prison fit now. Dripped out. And that's from Wealthy Jit. Okay, you should do a fed on the dumbest criminals. I think I will. <laughs> Michael Trostein, bunch of dollar super chats. Thank you so much. Did you see Jay with the I am emblem? 100 bucks. I appreciate that. This is my main him take his uncle. She said it in doc. Yeah, I know. I uh, appreciate the amount of work you put in to make this content. RIPX. That's from Slayer8060. Yeah, his mom also uh, got in an argument with him because he asked her to go with him to the shop and she didn't want to. Uh, any chance to X organize this murder? No, uh, I read that one before. Uh, Okay, I think we're okay. I think we're Mike caught James. up. Let me just refresh. Uh, Mike James G23 goes for the algo and Candace. I'm in love with you. All right, another one, Candace. Uh, oh, shit. Mike James again. Wyron, thank you so much, bro. I appreciate it greatly. Down the Monko, Monko, and we got 2006 of y'all watching right now. Not only was 2006 a great year, but I need you guys to like the video because I'm starting to get a stuffed nose here because I film in this cold ass apartment, and uh, <laughs> yeah, uh. Yeah, guys, get it to can you if you guys can get me to like close to two thousand likes, I'll love you guys forever. Uh, what else do we got here? I see someone in the chat saying "Rest in Piss X." Listen, bro, if you don't like his music, that's one thing, but to disrespect someone that is deceased, pretty low value behavior, my friend. Okay, even if you don't like someone, you don't have to disrespect them in their death. Like, why? Makes no sense. You know what I mean? Stupid. You don't have to be a fan of the music to show respect. Uh, shut up and take my money. Thank you, John Hancock. I appreciate that. Uh, let's see here. Uh, call the feds. Big Mo's inside my perfect tents, and now they're perfect 10,000 pounds. All right. I appreciate that. Uh, I don't know. He's always talking about Mo having sex with his girlfriends. I don't know. Uh, let's see here. 
Uh, what are we at? Uh, what are your, what are your thoughts on this, uh, Jackie? Somebody keeps asking, do I know his music and his songs? And yeah, I do. I love XXX. And I think my favorite song is Save Me and Jocelyn Flores. So I just wanted to confirm. I'm a big fan. Die hard. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Um, uh, fresh in. What, what, what else do we got here? Fresh in 10 years, Robert Allen. I don't know. I think I think he's going to get 20 to 25. What I think, yeah, I think he's gonna get twenty to twenty five, just because they killed a high profile individual. You know what I mean? They fucked up by killing a celebrity, bro. Like if they had just robbed him, that would have been one thing. But X fought them back, and and, and Boatwright just decided, fuck it, I'm gonna shoot him and kill him. And he probably right, he might have know, known who they were too. Guys, South Florida is small. Everybody knows each other in this bitch. Everybody knows each other, especially like, you know, in that area, Pompano Beach, Fort Lauderdale, Lauderdale Hill, like it, all these guys know each other, bro. Um, especially in the criminal underworld. <laughs> Someone said great value fucking Kim Kardashian. <laughs> you have a response to that? I mean, they used to call me Kardashian, so I'm like, wow, I just turned into Kardashian. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> Fair <laughs> I'd enough. I'd rather not be a Kardashian ever in my life. She a good sport, guys. She ain't gonna get triggered if you guys make fun of her. I no, tried. go for it. Uh, Jocelyn Flores is cool, yeah. All right, we got 20 bucks from Mike James. I bought Chris Peanut Butter. Okay, fair enough. Um, anything else here? I, I think the saddest part about this is these guys were such scrubs. And, like, he was, I mean, X was a legend. I think it's miserable that people like this even planned this out, messed everything up, didn't even dress correctly. <laughs> and they killed somebody who, like, today, at this point, he would have been, like, an enormous contribution to music. He, I think he just... He covers so many different levels and genres of music that not many people can do. Could be that versatile. Maybe Kanye. I actually, yeah, Kanye West. Maybe, maybe. But like X, like really spoke to people who had like a lot going on, and he talked to the kids. And he was a kid himself. He blew up in jail. I mean, if yeah. anyone knows the story about him, his mugshot blew him up, and that's yeah. how he became super legendary. And to be 20 years old and to have that much clout, I mean, not even just clout, but just his work was amazing. This mugshot right here was uh, was what blew him up. Um, it was like the cover of uh, one of his albums. And this is actually, I think, when he went in for domestic violence yeah. with this girl. So, again, he wasn't a perfect person, guys. He was a criminal. Yeah, he did, ro he did a home burglary with a firearm and stuff like that. But he was in the process of changing. He knew what he was doing was fucked up. And he was, he was changing and, you know, he didn't get a chance. Uh, and, you know... People make mistakes. It is what it is. But I mean, you know, some mistakes are irreversible and killing someone is one of those mistakes. Um, I think he redeemed himself when he got out. I mean, nothing compares to abusing women. Obviously, that's disgusting behavior. Yeah. But he did like a lot for the Parkland shooting. I mean, he really tried to like. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. That He, he donated. He donated. Not for even that. just donated. But after like he spoke to kids, he kept his. um he kept his Instagram chat open for people who were suffering and he always played football like on the field where kids were, you know, really sad. And he, he would spend his time going like, you want to come out and play football with me? If you guys are having a rough day, like X did a lot for mental health with people. And I, I really respect that. You don't see people doing that. Like he was for the people, like, and yeah. he was just a little kid. You got to think about this 17 years old, like to die at 20. It, he did so much in three years. Yeah. It's like, True. It's tremendous. And a, a lot of people can't can't say that. Like, you know, and who would have known what would have happened if he lasted another 10 years and was still alive? Like his he would have just gotten smarter, better. And he's you know, not a dummy, too. If you watch his interviews, like guys, go watch his no jumper interview. Um and he's not an idiot. You know what I mean? Uh the guy's well spoken. He's not one of these like, you know, stupid mumble rappers. Um, so again, like I said before, I don't even listen to his music like that, but I can obviously respect and know what he contributed. And I know for a lot of people, especially people that like suffer from mental health, dark, you know, having like dark thoughts about maybe hurting themselves or whatever. Uh, he really did speak for that generation of people. Um, like I said before, just because I don't necessarily listen to the music or it's not necessarily my vibe doesn't mean that I can't acknowledge that, uh, that it is artistic and, and uh, you know, art to some degree you know like for example you guys know i don't like drake i think his music is pussified a generation drake's trash but i can't that's true he is trash in my opinion however i cannot sit here and dispute the fact that he's not going to go down in history as one of the greatest artists of all time 
I can't, I, 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 it's irrefutable at this point. You know what I mean? Like I might not personally like his music, but I can acknowledge his musical genius. Same thing with X. I don't listen to X, but I can acknowledge that he changed a lot of people's lives. He made good music for a large majority of people. And just because I don't listen to it doesn't mean I'm going to be an ignorant fuck and say, oh, yo, this shit trash. Like, I don't like it. Like, all right, I don't like it. I don't listen to it like that. But I know that other people did. And I know that it changed a lot of people's lives. And I know that he did a lot of good for a lot of people because the music was extremely influential. I mean, the guy had a cult following. You know, he was out here doing no jumper interviews, etc., with like a very small following. So that tells you guys something. Um, so, yeah, man, rest in peace. Uh, to X, you know, what I mean, dying at 20 years old, and I think the, the the craziest part is that we got the dumbest criminals, right, ever committing this crime. We walked over the case in detail, guys. You guys saw all their fuck ups, wearing orange sandals, getting into car accidents, uh, fucking buying a ski mask from the same store where they found X in the first place, where they committed the crime, using a rental vehicle from Turo to commit the fucking crime, walking in, uh into a, a, a location with surveillance video, right? Spending a bunch of money afterwards, recording themselves with hundreds of thousands, with hundreds of thousands of dollars in dollar bills, right? Sorry, a hundred thousands of dollars in a hundred dollar bills, fanning it out on their phones, throwing it around, dancing, like, bruh, having spent show casings, right? Having the guns around, like these guys are fucking like, this was an L all around for them. So, uh, you know, it is what it is, man. It is what it is. Somebody brought up, this is like when John Lennon got killed by that one psycho. I love John Lennon. I have him tattooed on me. Sorry, I have to show you guys this. The reason that I think this is important is because hatred is disgusting. And like these kids sat around, planned this out. And he was such a good, X was a good kid. He turned himself around, like turned his life around. And I mean, can you imagine just brewing and planning in your orange flip flops how you're going to kill this poor 20 year old kid just because of what 50 grand in a bag in a Louis bag like like the same thing goes with the John Lennon death like it's just a senseless murder and it's like it's just evil it doesn't come from if it doesn't come from love like why I don't know so people go crazy when they when they hate someone and it just it doesn't make sense to me why people do this senseless murders are disgusting. Yeah, very stupid. So uh, I see you guys spamming in the chat, uh, Sneeko. So listen, for all you clowns that just came in to spam the chat, I need y'all to like the goddamn video so I can go on to Rumble and uh, I, I, I guess talk shit with Sneeko. But anyway, um, with that said, guys, don't forget to like the video on the way out. Subscribe to the channel. Um, Jackie, uh, where can people find you? Last thoughts. At J Puma on Instagram, J P U M A A. I am at Black Honey Tattoo. We just got a new location. It's super dope, huge, and Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Yeah, but I travel to tattoo, so you can find me wherever. She's <laughs> not cheap, guys. Say. She ain't cheap. She charges <laughs> quite a bit to tattoo you. So, um, yeah. So go check her out on Instagram, guys. She has her portfolio there. If you guys want to look at her work. Uh, don't forget to send a dick pic her way as well. Yeah. She loves those. Love them. Uh, <laughs> I'll tattoo them from you. There you go. Uh, guys, hope you guys enjoyed that podcast, man. Uh, covered a dark case. Like I said, rest in peace to X. Condolences to his family. Uh, these four idiots deserve to ride in jail. Um, and yeah, you know, we did a, the mo probably the most thorough breakdown on this case on the internet that I've seen. I've like looked everywhere and no one really looked at the criminal affidavit and broke down the evidence the same way that we did, man. So share this video with a friend. Like the video. Listen to his music. Uh, support. And I'll catch you guys on uh, tomorrow. Uh, actually, oh shit, did we hit chats that came in, or did I miss them? Um, there's a few up top. Oh I shit. Think. Okay, I'll read these real quick before I go. I don't want to leave no man behind, as George Bush once said. Remember that shit? Leave no child behind. Drake. You remember that? <laughs> yeah, I knew people were gonna say son about Drake. He's gross. Okay. Uh, no, hold on. Let me refresh this shit. I'll make sure I get all these chats and I'll close this thing and then I'll jump on Rumble because all these guys are horny for Rumble right now. Uh, didn't think we knew them. He would have dapped them up. Okay. Now the dude is making fun of Fresh saying in 10 years he will look like Alan. Tell Fresh his laundry is done. I bought Chris Peanut Butter. And that's from Mike James, John Hancock, and Frankie Baltimore. Thank you, guys. Fresh to 10 years equals Robert Allen. <laughs> okay. Uh, cool. We're caught up. So other than that, guys, I love y'all. Uh, go ahead and check out uh, Jackie. And, uh, you know, if you guys want to get a tattoo or send a dick pic, one of the two. And I'll catch you guys tomorrow for three episodes of Fresh and Fit. Two, one after hours, obviously. And then we got two Fresh and Fit um, 
regular podcast money Mondays. So I'll catch you guys at, I'll, I'll, we'll announce the time tomorrow. Love y'all. Peace. I was a special agent with Homeland Security Investigations, okay, guys? HSI. The cases that I did mostly were human smuggling and drug trafficking. No one else has these documents, by the way. Here's what FedEx covers. Dr. Lafredo confirmed lacerations due to stepping on glass. Murder investigation. You see him reaching in his jacket. You don't know. And he's positioning. Been on February 13, 2019. You're facing.